Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Smith from Backbench Coder. So this is a new project where I'm going to make this cool developer portfolio using Next.js and TypeScript. For the UI, we are going to use Tailwind CSS and for the animation, we are going to use React Trimmer Motion. And here is a disclaimer guys. I've already made this project using React and Bootstrap. In fact, that was my first ever YouTube video. It was also the worst ever YouTube video I've ever produced. Anyway, if you want to make this project using React and Bootstrap, you can watch that series. Cool. And by the way guys, I'm currently working on the PWA version of this app. So by the end of this series, I might make this a PWA. Who knows? Anyway, let's talk about this app. So I have these two main sections. One is the sidebar, which holds all the metadata about the user, like the user's image, user's name, the web developer, the user's tag. Then this download resume. So if I click on this download resume, the PDF version will be downloaded. Here it is. Submit the resume.pdf. Cool. Then I have the social links, YouTube, LinkedIn, and GitHub. I have this contact section, the address and this email ID, phone number, whatever it is. And then this email me. So if I click on this email me, it will open the system email. Look at this. With the two field already filled up. Here it is. This code.sumesadder.gmail.com already filled up. It is same as this code.sumesadder.gmail.com. Here it is. Cool. Well, I think this is more modern way to talk with the client instead of making a boring contact form. Okay. And then I have this dark UI. This is sexy. So click on this dark UI. Look at this. So basically this button will toggle between the light UI and the dark UI. Cool. I prefer the dark UI. Everyone prefers that. That's all for this left section. This is fixed. And then at this right section, I have these three main pages, which is about resume and these projects. I can navigate to the pages using this nav bar. Here it is. Look at this. So let's talk about the about first. So here at the top, this is something about me. I'm currently pursuing BTEC degree and all. Then what are the services I offer? So front-end, back-end, API development and all. As you can see, this is a single component rendered multiple times. Typical React thing. That's it for about. Just go to resume. Look at this cool animations. All the animations are done using Framer Motion. Okay, so here I have my education, the experience and all the skills with a label. Again, look at the animation. Just go to about. Click on this resume. Beautiful. Very minimalistic but quite impressive. Now just go to projects, look at this page transition guys, opacity off, opacity on, this is done using Framer Motion again, look at this the Stragger animation, this is also done using Framer Motion, ok so inside this project section I have all the projects, we can further filter this out using this nav bar, so these are all my projects and then click on this react, these are all the projects made using react and then mongo, these are all the projects made using mongo and so on. And now just click on a project, let's click on this algorithm visualizer. Look at this, this is all the details about this project, like the project's name, the description about this project, and some technical tags I've used inside this project, like React, Firebase, Framer Motion, and then this GitHub link and the project link. Project link means the deployed version. So if I click on this project, the deployed version, it will send you to the deployed version. So just go back to the project. Cool. Just click on another project. Nice. See the light UI version, beautiful. There are so many cool things going on inside the code, that's why I am also using TypeScript for the best practice. Ok, so let's see the responsiveness of this project. So control shift i go to the mobile version, cool, look at this. This is my sidebar, my project section, click on this about, it will go to the top and again, these are all the services I offer and then click on this resume, I love this resume section. Nice, nice, cool. Let's go to a desktop version, beautiful. And by the way guys, we are also gonna deploy this project. In fact, this project is also deployed. Look at the URL, this is sumit day, sumit app. So you can just go to this URL and check this out. Okay, so that's all for this project. Let's talk about the prerequisites. So as we are going to use Next.js in our project, you should have a basic idea about React, like what are React components, what are React hooks, and all the basic stuff about React. And then for the TypeScript and Tailwind, if you don't know much, that's absolutely fine. This is a good project for you to get started with Tailwind, TypeScript and Next.js. So that's it. I know I'm missing something, but we are going to cover this in the project. It will be fun guys. So see you in the next video. So this is the second part of this portfolio project. If you have not watched the introduction part, please watch that to get an idea about the final product. I'll put the link in the description box. Okay, cool. So in this section, we are going to set up our next app using TypeScript and Tailwind CSS. So just go to your terminal. Go to a directory where you want to create the app and just run npx create next app and then your app name. So npx create next app and the app name. For me this is portfolio. Now remember the app name should not contain any capital letters so all should be in small. So just enter. Cool. 
so let it create the next tab meanwhile let's talk about next.js okay so this is the official page of next.js now there are hundreds of videos available that tell you about the absolute basics of next.js i don't want to bore you with the same theory again and again but in short next.js is a react based framework for building modern web applications now what is needed to make a modern web application let me talk about some of the points first one is server side rendering what does it mean it means send only those html to the browser which is needed to render the current web page that's it just send the page as pre-rendered so that the browser does not need to process the javascript and create html out of it i mean this is the main feature of next.js and then the second point is static generation now whenever you create an web app try to make content static as much as possible if you can make a page static just make that static you don't need to create that dynamically it will be much much faster for the browser to render the web page right so next.js provide hybrid static generation support and then the third point is image optimization feature image optimization means load smaller image for the smaller device load images lazily in the browser and some other features next.js provides great support for image optimization okay the next point is easy routing next.js supports file based routing so routing is very very easy to configure in next.js and then some other points like typescript support css module support code splitting etc etc like next.js has all the features to make a modern web application you can read about all of these on this official page like image optimization, next.js analytics, zero config, hybrid SSG, SSR. We are going to use most of the features in this app. Oh, okay, so just go back to your terminal. You have the app is created. So just go to your directory, cd to portfolio. Nice. Open this in your code editor. I'll be using VS Code. Okay, so this is our basic next step. Let's talk about the folder structure. So just go inside this pages folder. Here we have two special files. One is this underscore app.js and another one is underscore document.js. Let's create that underscore document.js, which is not created by default because you don't want to mess with the underscore document.js, but we are going to mess with that. Why not? So first of all, underscore app.js. So this one is our root file. It means every pages renders on top of this. Look at this component. It renders all the pages and then underscore document.js. Here, if you want to modify the HTML document, you can make that inside this file. And then I have this index.js. Next.js is based on file based routing. It means every file inside this pages folder is a separate route except the special files. The special files is underscore app.js and document.js. So every file except these two files are separate route. So this index.js, it means our home page. Look at this. This is some basic React. It is just exporting a basic React component. That's it. Yep, we are going to talk about this in detail. Okay, then I have this API folder. Inside this API folder, I have this hello.js. So every file inside this API folder is an endpoint. How cool is that? You can create your own API endpoint inside this Next.js framework. I love this feature. Okay, so this is API folder. And then I'm done with this pages folder. Again, I'm going to talk about this in detail throughout this project. So, I mean, this is just an introduction, guys. Okay, so then I have this public folder. All the files inside this public folder will be served as static. So just put your assets inside this public folder and it will be served as static. Okay, next I have this styles folder. First one is this global.css, which is our, I mean, global CSS. Put the styles inside this file, which you want to be global. I mean, you can rename this file. And then I have this home.module.css. Now Next.js has this CSS module support built in, so you don't need to worry about this unique class name. Like you can just literally import this CSS file as module. And I can show you that. Just go to index.js. Look at this. This home.module.css is been imported as styles, and then just use styles.container, styles.main, styles.title. How cool is that? I love Next.js, man. Okay, so I have this styles, and then I have this git ignore, <laughs> and then I have this package.json. Cool. Let's talk about this package.json. Okay, so first of all, the name of the project, the version, which is 0 0.1.0, which you don't really care. And then private is true. What does it mean? It means just an extra layer of security so that you don't accidentally publish this directory as a separate library. I mean, you are not going to do that, but again, some npm random things. Okay. And then scripts. This is important. There are three scripts. First one is dev, npm run dev. It will run your development server. And then build, which is npm run build. It will build your project just like React. And then start, it will run your you know, production server. So npm run start. And then dependencies, it's built on top of React, so obviously React and React DOM is needed. And then next, okay. So, yep, we are done with this project structure. Okay, cool. Let's add TypeScript in our project. Now, again, Next.js comes with automatic TypeScript configuration. So, just change the name of the file. Let's change the name of the file to index.ts. 
uh, index dot ts not ts it should be tsx remember it should be tsx should be tsx 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 <laughs> okay cool now just run the development server next.js will recognize that you have used typescript so you need to install some modules so control j it will open my vs code terminal okay so npm run dev it will run my project on port 3000 uh, uh, uh. yep look at this it looks like you are trying to use typescript huh? so just install these modules okay so the modules are typescript types react and types node so just copy these three modules and I'm gonna use npm not yarn so cls npm i install this as dev dependencies and then these three modules enter cool okay so let it install meanwhile let's see how we can add tailwind css in this next.js app so just go to official documentation of tailwind css uh, uh, uh. tailwind css with what next.js click on the first link cool so create your project i've already created that setting up tailwind.css if you are using next.js version 10 which i am using next.js version 10 so just install these packages npm install tailwind latest post css and auto prefixer so just copy this command cool go to your terminal and put this here which is npm install tailwind css latest post css latest and auto prefixer latest and i am going to install this as dev dependencies cause my build will extract the CSS classes so I don't need the whole Tailwind CSS things so just install this as dev dependencies and enter by the way we need to change all the extension to TS and TSX respectively so this one is document TSX whichever file is returning a component just rename this to TSX and other file is dot TS so app dot TSX oh oh hey wait app dot TSX cool and this one is hello dot TS beautiful anything else nope okay so let's run the server npm run dev cool my tailwind CS is also installed nice so my app is running on localhost 3000 we detected typescript in your project and created tsconfig.json look at this this tsconfig.json is automatically populated by next.js we can definitely change this if anything we want but we don't want that okay cool Okay, so our server is running on localhost 3000. So just go to localhost 3000. Uh, uh, uh. Internal server error. Wow. So that's our first bug, and that is because our document. It should be our document. Come on. Uh, let's look at the error message. Yes, this underscore document. So we have created this underscore document.tsx, but we have not created the HTML file. So for now, just just delete this underscore document.tsx. Just use the default which is provided by next.js behind the scene okay and then again run the server just close the server and run this again cool refresh the page and here it is and here it is and here it is okay so welcome to next.js thank you get started by editing index.js then i have this documentation learn example deploy and all Okay, so let's see the source code. I should see all the HTML. Look at this. This powered by Barsa logo. Get started by editing. And then like all the HTML is here. Now let me show you a React app and you can see the HTML. A pure React app, I should say. Uh, let's go to my portfolio which is created using React. So sumit app. Just go to a source code control u bunch of javascript but no html tag like i have only the title which is where it is sumit dev developer that's it and then this javascript will create our html and render this on the browser so there are a lot of process going on inside the browser user will be frustrated if it just take you know more than 20 seconds uh yeah cool so just close this close this close this beautiful now I have this TypeScript setup complete and let's set up our Tailwind CSS. Oh, what happened with my boys? So first of all, we need to create our Tailwind config file. So for that, we can use a command which is provided by Tailwind CSS. Yeah, this one npx Tailwind CSS in it with a flag p, it will create our Tailwind config file and the post CSS config file. So just go to your terminal and paste this, enter. It should create two files. Yep, look at this. 
our tailwind config file here it is beautiful here we can define what are the files we need to purge just go to a documentation and yeah this one i need to purge all the tsx file so just copy this piece of code and what does it mean by purge it will check all the files in the build process and then remove all the unnecessary css so just copy this i don't need this js ts jsx i only need the tsx so just remove this brace and dot tsx also dot tsx okay so it will check all the files inside these pages and the components and then parse that okay so these pages i need to create another folder which is components so let's create that in our root directory which is not needed right now components okay so yeah are we done with this no we are not yet done we need to import the directives so for that just go to official documentation yep this one this tailwind based tailwind component and tailwind utilities tailwind not tailwind okay so just go to global.css remove all of this and put this here cool that's it save this now we don't need this home.module.css cause we are not going to use any you no know, simple css we are going to use tailwind css okay remove this just go to the index.tsx here we can't import this home.module.css cause this file does not exist actually remove all the all the code inside this file okay now let's create a component so underscore rafc it will give me the boilerplate of a functional component this is an extension of vs code just install that okay so just write something like uh, bye bye world cool now look at this you need to export the pages as default you need to export the pages as default 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 look at this export default you have to make the export default okay so yeah bye bye world cool now it will be served as our home page just go to a browser refresh the page beautiful bye bye world let's see if tailwind is configured or not so for that we need to restart our server cause we have just modified our config file so npm run dev again we don't need this terminal npm run dev npm run dev the server is restarted refresh the page cool bye bye world now just go to elements control shift i the shortcut and just try to add some you know tailwind css so just click on this h1 okay click on the cls just add a new class uh, text yeah look at this takes 5 9 whatever base you know bg red 300 400 yeah tailwind is working fine so we are good to go okay so so far we have set up our app with tailwind and typescript and in this section we are gonna create the layout and the sidebar so let's see the final version and let's plan the layout okay so basically this layout has two parts one is the sidebar and the other one is this main section this sidebar is fixed this navbar is also fixed and this section will render by the pages so i have three pages one is this projects one is this about and one is this resume yep so let's create a grid of 12 columns and allocate three columns to the sidebar and the other nine columns to the main section okay so let's do that just go to underscore app.tsx cause that file is our root but before that just go to global.css and set the background color of the body so target the body background color black for now this is temporarily cause we need to change this using tailwind.css i mean tailwind css not tailwind.css okay background color black and the font family ah sans serif cool save this and just make a to do uh, use tailwind comment this out beautiful just go to app.tsx and let's create the layout first of all we need to create a grid right so just create a div creating grid using tailwind is very easy so create a div inside this create a grid of 12 columns so just go to parent div and add a class name grid and number of columns 12 so grid columns 12 nice add some space between the grid so gap 6 and then inside this div i'll have the sidebar so create another div put sidebar for now and then this component i need to put this in another div so just put this component inside the second div nice okay so i have this two div inside the grid and let's allocate three columns for the sidebar so let's again add a class name uh, this is columns 
span 3 and for the second div this is column span 9 cos 3 plus 9 is equal to 12 <laughs> beautiful also set a background color to white so that I can see this bg white cool save this nice let's see go to the app local 3000 refresh this zoom this to 100 percent okay so I have this two grid sidebar and the main section let's give this some padding and margin so you can just go to app.tsx target the parent div so margin y I mean margin top and bottom around 14 and padding x around 48 also make the corner rounded of the sidebar so just target the sidebar class and this is rounded medium or just go for bigger value to excel cool copy the class also target the second div put this rounded to excel save this let's see refresh this i don't need to refresh but again hot loading is a bit slow okay so this is fine now let's check the responsiveness now again tailwind css is a mobile first framework so so all the classes are applicable for smaller device by default we need to manage the responsiveness using the breakpoint so just go for the mobile screen actually let's make this side by side so that i can see this okay just go for the mobile screen okay so how can i make this responsive so for the mobile screen i want the sidebar to take all the 12 columns so just go inside the sidebar class add column span 12 both the class so column span 12 because our grid is of 12 columns and then for this column span 3 it will be only applicable for the large screen so from the large screen this is column span 3 so lg colon column span 3 and again this is lg column column span 3 very easy to make this responsive save this nice look at this i have this sidebar i have this bye bye world but i have some extra padding let's make this also responsive so just go to the parent component and set the padding to 5 for the smaller screen i mean by default this is for the extra smaller screen and this px48 will only be applicable for the large screen save this beautiful so let's give some padding to the sidebar so p4 padding at all side and then take center take center cool save this and now let's create the sidebar component so just go to a components folder and then inside this components folder let's create the component.tsx remember it has to be tsx dot component sidebar dot tsx so sidebar.tsx cool okay let's create the dummy component rafce beautiful let's put some content inside this sidebar okay so what i need to put inside this sidebar we need this image we need the name we need this web developer tag this download resume all the social icons and this contact person and this email me and this light ui button i mean this toggle ui button okay so let's do that so let's put an image the image i can get this from the url so just get this url open image in a new tab copy this url just put your own image guys go here nice alt tag what is like user apodar apodar nice it will take some time for the hot reloading okay so let's put the name here so again age one or age three does not really matter so sumit De. i'll change the color of the first name look at this this is Sumit Day. Also, the font is different. This is Kaushan script. I need to import the font. So, let's put this first time in a span. <laughs> Not H3, bro. Okay. So, span Sumit and just remove this Sumit. Nice. And then I have this web developer tag. So, inside a P web developer. Cool. And then again, I have this download resume. So, again, inside a P download. Let's see. Uh, save this why it is not working and that is because i have not imported the sidebar wow so let's go to app.tsx import the sidebar should be auto imported let's see at the top yep sidebar is imported from component slash sidebar save this nice okay so i need to put an icon here inside this download resume so for that i'll be installing a package which is called react icons so just go to a terminal and type npm i react icons enter cool okay let it install and let's further populate this what i need next i need the social media icons and again this is a game of icons okay and then i need the address bar so just keep this icons i mean social icons so social icons comment this out cool and then i have this address okay let's put the address here 
what I need I need the location so inside the div put another div for the location uh -huh, just let me resize this sorry okay cool so inside the div just put a span and this is Kolkata India I am from Kolkata India I need to put the icon here I'll put the icon once it is installed and then I have the email here so what this is sumax at their gmail.com and then I have the phone number 851840 I don't know what I am typing but I am just typing 78546134 cool is this 10 digits no cool okay so I have this div I have the address section done and then I have the button so email button email button if I click on this button it will open my system email so button this is email me and another button which is toggle UI or toggle theme toggle theme we are gonna do the dark UI part later seems like our react icons package is also installed yep okay so if you don't know about this package let's go to the browser and search for react icons you will get almost all the icons in SVG format so that you can change the color you can resize that so just search for react icons and click on the first link you will have all the icons like from font of some and design material material design okay so hero icons all the icons are available we need a bunch of icons so first of all the github github just search for github look at this i need this ai fill github so just copy this go to the code again resize this just open our localhost 3000 resize this cool okay so let's go at the top and import the icons import in a curly brace ai fill github from react icons and then mention the provider this is ai and then i need the linkedin icon so ai linkedin yeah fill linkedin and another one which is linkedin github linkedin github linkedin github oh youtube so ai fill youtube beautiful and then i need the location icon and this is coming from the go import go location from react icon slash go cool anything else yes i need the tie icon and this tie icon is available in gi so import gi tie from react icons slash gi cool now i can import this icon uh, gi oh not go tie this is gi tie look at this cool okay so let's put the icons inside this download resume this is gi tie so just use as a component GI tag self closing tag as at the width and the height so use class name width around 6 pixel and height around 6 pixel nice and then inside this location again put the go tie not go tie this is go location save this I don't need to mention the width and height cause this is small mm -mm. and then let's put the social icon so inside the div put an anchor tag and the ref just put your link here and then first one is ai fill youtube cool just add the width and the height so with six height six actually make this larger with eight height eight okay just copy this link couple of times cool for the second icon this is github so ai fill what github cool and the third one is ai fill what linkedin linkedin save this look at this i have all the data and let's design this okay so let's start with the image let's add a class name and by the way guys i need to change this to next image we'll do that later so first of all let's add an height and width add an height and width <laughs> width 32 height 32 make this rounded so rounded full i mean border radius 50 percent and mx auto so that it is horizontally centered save this horse loading is a little bit slow okay cool and then for the name just target this h3 add a class name just put some margin at top and bottom so my around 3 or 4 save this so margin at top and bottom 4 increase the text size so text 3xl add some font to it so font medium hot loading is a bit slow oh i need to put a space here so after sumit just put a space cool also give some letter spacing so use tracking wide wider save this cool okay so let's go to our web developer tag let's add a class name i don't know i don't know what happened with my voice add some horizontal padding so px2 vertical padding around one unit so py1 
set some margin so my3 at top and bottom the background color so bg gray 200 make this rounded so rounded full cool save this it looks nice okay just copy all these classes and just go for the second paragraph i mean this download resume actually i can't make this a paragraph i need to make this an anchor tag cause it will download the resume right so anchor tag then use a class name put these classes save this okay uh -huh. okay and then age rep i need to put the path of this asset which is my resume so i'll put that later and then the download this is the name of my pdf i'll put that later so name that's for now cool save this okay i need to make this icon and this text horizontally centered and vertically centered right so for that i'll be using flex that's the base option so flex just add a class name item center so that the items are hor uh, vertically centered sorry then justify center this will make these items horizontally centered mm -hmm -hmm. justify center i mean justify content center i guess you all know the basic css by the way okay so just save this it's nice yeah it's really nice let's go for these icons so this social icon just target the parent div add a class name again i need to place these icons horizontally so just use flex justify content around not center but around add a vertical margin so my 5 unit text uh, i need to change the text color so for now this is text 500 green just save this i need to decrease the width for the smaller screen so again width what 9 by 12 so this is 75 percent and again from the large screen or from the medium screen it will be with full so making responsiveness in tailwind is really easy okay so that is fine save this save this save this save this oh let's make this horizontally centered so for the whole block this is mx auto so marginal left and right auto nice and let's target all these icons and just add the cursor pointer cursor pointer beautiful look at this it's fine yeah it's fine okay so let's go for the address and target the parent div class name add some margin at top and bottom so my5 add some padding at top and bottom py4 save this add a background gray so bg gray 200 just be consistent save this again hot reloading hot reloading hot reloading nice but we have a problem can you see this space at left and right and this is because I have the padding on the parent div and inside this app.tsx look at this I have this padding which is p4 that contains our sidebar this is padding one rem right so to remove this space I need to set the margin left and right minus one rem so just go to the sidebar and then target this div add style cool put two curly brace and then the first one is margin left margin left this is minus one rem cause I have one rem padding at left and right for the parent component and then margin right this is again minus one rem so it will uh, delete the space save this let's see yeah cool look at this it's far better right let's target this icon and the location so target the inner div class name again flex this is item center so that this is vertically centered item center means align item center by the way and then justify centered for the horizontally centered save this save this save this okay i need to add some space between the icon and the kolkata india so for that i can target the span so class name actually nope let's target this parent div and add another class which is space space x around 2 let's save this yep it's fine nice let's target the paragraph so target both the paragraph using alt and click add class name add some margin at top and bottom so my2 save this let's see yep it's fine and let's target the buttons so again target both the button add class name and again guys as you can see i need to put gradient background color on the buttons but this green color is not yet available so just use a proxy so target both the class I'll be using green 400 for now. So to add a background color, we need to use BG gradient. This is coming from Tailwind. BG gradient to R. And then from, from which color? This is green. So from green 400 to what? To blue. This blue color is available, which is blue 400. Save this. 
yeah it's fine let's add some width so width around 8 by 12 this is 66 percent and again i'm applying all the classes to both the buttons okay make this rounded full and then add some padding at top and bottom add some padding at left and right around 5 unit just change the color of the text to white text white just add some margin so my 2 units save this yeah it's looking nice let's go for the large screen okay so now i need to add the font which is Gaussian script and then i need to change the background color of the whole body to the gradient i need to also add the green color okay so let's go for the font let's go to the google font and find this Gaussian script and then select the font select the style and here it is look at this just copy the link of this font and by the way guys i'll put the link in the description box so that you don't need to find this only thing you need to do is to give this video a like please like please it is 2:31 am so please hit the like button <laughs> okay now where to put this link so for that i need to use the document file remember underscore document.tsx so just go inside the pages folder create a new file which is underscore document.tsx okay let's go to our next.js documentation and see how to set up this document file so next this document mm -hmm. advanced features custom document yep okay so just copy this document just go to underscore document okay cool so what is going on this is a class based component which is just extending this document class and then this get initial props i don't need that okay so basically this is importing the html and then the head and then inside the body it is just injecting the next script and the main section so quite simple let's add the font so just remove this self closing head and put put a head okay just copy the font again because i lost the font okay so just copy this again let's go inside the head put it here just make this self closing <laughs> also the second one self closing save this nice anything is wrong yeah save this cool okay now how can we use this font using tailwind i need to add this font in my tailwind config so let's again go to a tailwind documentation and guys do use the documentation properly like you will find everything in the documentation okay so let's search for what custom font or font font family okay let's find an example yeah customizing so by default tailwind provides three font family the sans serif and mono to add a font just go inside the font family and then add the font okay so just copy this piece of code and just go to tailwind config tailwind config oh 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 tailwind config okay inside this theme just put it here okay i don't need this sans and serif mono i don't need to extend that remove this display and let's name this font what Carlson. i don't need to put this inside a string i guess anyway and then inside this array let's put the font which is Carlson script right so just go again to the google font and copy this Carlson script the name of the font go inside the array put it here and then if you want to put any fallback fonts you can just put this inside this array okay i am not going to use any fallback fonts save this cool and now i can use this using font Carlson. let's see so just go to the sidebar <laughs> just go inside this sumit just target this h3 and just use font what Carlson? Carlson. nice save this it should work look at this the font is changed to Carlson script and if it does not work in your case just restart the server because sometimes if you change the document.tsx file you need to restart the server okay so yeah we need to change the color but let's add the color first so again just go to a documentation and let's search for colors or custom color yeah customizing color okay so look at this i have all these colors available but i still want another color so let's see how we can add a color custom color yep okay so let's copy this piece of code so just go inside the theme if you want to extend just go inside the extend I also need the existing colors right so just go inside the extend and put this here cool so first of all what is the name of the color this is green put any name you want i don't need any light version i don't need the dark version dark version oh and then what is the color so 00 f260 00 f260 
six zero. The hex value save this. Okay. Now I can use this using text green, BG green, whatever. So let's go to a document dot tsx and set the background color of the body. So body just add class name. So I need to add the gradient color, right? So BG gradient to R. Okay. From what? From green. So from green. Yeah, from green. I have this from green. Okay, to what? To blue, four hundred. Oh, oops, oops, four hundred. Nice. Save this. Let's see my local is three thousand. Uh huh. Nice. Look at this. Also add the colors to the icons. So just go to a sidebar. Sidebar. Dot tsx. This takes green five hundred. Yeah, takes green five hundred. Just remove this five hundred. Okay. And also go to the buttons, and then this is just from green, no 400 from green default. Okay, save this cool. Now also go to the name, which is my Sumit. Just target the first name, class name. This is text green. Cool. Save this. Yeah, look at this. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, let's add the functionality for the email. So if I click on this email me, the system email will be opened. So let's go to this sidebar. Let's go to the button. Okay. So inside this button, let's add an on-click handler. Oops. On-click. So I'll be using the Windows object. So just use an arrow function. Just target the window. Let's use the open method. Let's inside the string. Pass mail to what? My email, which is sumax at the gmail dot com. It is not my email, by the way. It's some fake email. Sumesh at gmail dot com. Let's refresh the page. And by the way, guys, I am assuming you know the basic React, like this arrow function and all. This arrow function will be triggered, and this will trigger my Windows dot open function. So let's see if I click on this email me, it will open, it will open, it will open, it will open. Yeah. <laughs> Select an email, and the to field is Sumesh at gmail dot com. Cool. Let's close this. And by the way, let's remove this outline. It looks silly. Okay. So just go to this button. Now we can target this focus state using focus colon. That's how easy Tailwind is. Focus. I should not say easy. This is more you know handy. Outline none. Nice. So focus on focus outline none. And by the way, guys, I forgot to mention that I am using two extension which is called. Ah, uh, first one is Headwind. So let's go to the extensions. Oh, how can I forget that? So Headwind. Yeah, look at this. A class sorter for Tailwind CSS, just to write some clean and organized code, and then another extension which is Tailwind Intelligence. And again, as the name suggests, it will give suggestion for the Tailwind CSS class. So just use these two extensions. Close this. Close this. So I guess I am done with the sidebar. Let's see the responsiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at this. I need to give more padding at left and right for the medium screen, right? So let's just go to the app dot tsx. So underscore app dot tsx. So from the small screen, so sm colon. This is padding px fourteen or twenty. Just give more padding. And then from the medium screen, so md colon px around what thirty two. Save this. Yeah, it's better, far better. Mm, let's make this for the mobile screen. Yeah, nice, beautiful. Let's go for the Moto G four. Yeah, cool. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll be designing this nav bar and then this main section. So see you in the next video. But before that, please hit the like button. Please, please, please. See you in the next video. Bye. So in this video, we are going to create this nav bar. Let's see how this nav bar works. So let me just go to the final product. So here it is. Okay. So inside this nav bar, I have three items, which is about, resume, and projects. So whichever element is active will be shifted at the left with some bold look. Look at this bold, and the respective page will be shown here. And the other two elements will be shown at the right. So let's do it. Okay, so let's create the navbar component inside this components folder. Navbar dot tsx. Ah, not tsc. Tsx. Cool. Underscore rfc, which will give me the boilerplate or functional component. Just export for now navbar. Navbar. That is fine. So just import this navbar. Navbar. So inside this underscore app dot tsx, just put the navbar. Should be auto imported from components slash navbar. Yup, at the top, auto imported. 
and I need to show the page after this nav bar. So this is my page, the component. So just put flex, which will be display flex, and the flex direction is by default row. I want this flex column, so the flex direction is column, that is fine. I will also create the pages so that I can test my component. So inside this pages folder, I have the about pages, right? So which is my index page, I will create the resume page and the projects page. So resume.tsx underscore i a f c e e underscore underscore i f c look at this this is export default which is masked for a page or i should say resume page for now just give this a class name padding 4 so that it gives some space at all sides okay cool and then i have this second page which is not second page third page which is projects dot t s x again underscore r a f c just return what projects page just give some padding p4 nice deadly simple okay let's see just go to my localhost 3000 and refresh the page i should see my nava bar yep i have my nava bar and my bye bye world okay let's go to a nava bar navbar.tsx cool <laughs> remove this text nava bar lot of nava bar sorry about that okay so the idea is Whatever element is active, I need to show this at the left and whatever element is not active, I will show at the right. So I need to keep track of the active element. Let's create a piece of state for that. Mm -hmm. Inside this navbar, use state, which is a snippet provided by VS Code and the name of the state is active or active element, active item, okay, active item. Like I can literally spend my whole day to name a variable, okay, active name. And then initial state start with an empty string. Use state should be imported from React. Okay, at the top imported from React. Nice. And now as we are using TypeScript, you can actually specify the type of the state variable. But in this context, even if you don't specify the type explicitly, it will by default a type of string. Look at this, just hover over this active element. Look at this active element colon string. So type is string. Why? Because you are also assigning the value during the declaration of this variable. But in case you want to add the type, you can add the type using this generic so just put this angle bracket after this use state and define this type string cool beautiful not cool so inside this div i saw a span and that will hold my active element so inside a curly brace active element not active element active item bro active item and then for the other elements i'll put a div inside this div i need to put the nav item and that will be wrapped with a link so let's import link from next link import link from so next slash link uh -huh, cool now inside this div this is link and then inside this link you need to put the age ref let's say this is for the about so slash which is our home route which is our index page and index page is my about okay and then inside this link i need to put the anchor tag anchor tag not a a anchor tag cool just remove this rev beautiful why am i saying beautiful i don't know you can put a dislike for this beautiful so inside this anchor tag i will put a span and that will hold my item so this is about cool but i will only show this about if the active item is not about right so just before this link i can check this so inside a curly brace just check if the active item not equal to equal to about in that case i return this jsx if this is only valid and operator again some basic react save this cool just copy this couple of times for the projects and the resume for the second case if this is not projects i also projects projects i am a lot of typo okay this is projects and the link is projects for the third one this is resume the name is resume the route is resume cool save this and just put some styles so that i can you know differentiate the active element so class name this is font bold and just go for the color green and then for those elements which are not active just add some class name something like what text red and font large cool save this okay let's see okay so i have this about projects resume but i don't have the active element because i have not changed my active element 
so let's add an on click handler for every span so click on every span and by the way guys i'll change this to separate component in a minute on click just trigger an arrow function that will change my active element not active element active item so first one this is about for the second one uh -huh. for the second one this is projects and for the third one this is resume cool also put this inside a flex so that i can put some space and then space x around 3 that is fine save this refresh the page why i don't have the text red oh that is because text red does not exist text red 400 500 i need to put a weight okay so let me just zoom in okay so i have this about projects and resume but i still don't have the active element because the active element should be in green color but why i don't have the active element this is because this active item which is the state responsible for this active element is still an empty string and this empty string is this active item so it is not rendering and this is also the reason why these conditions are failed and that's why it's showing all the three elements so i need to fix that but let's click on an element look at this click on projects look at this the active element is projects click on resume the active element is resume and also a resume page is shown here click on about my route is also changed to home route and this is by by word which is our index page so the problem is only occurring for the first time when the component did mount so i need to fix that how can i fix that so basically we'll check the route if the route is slash which is our home route in that case i'll set the active element to about and then if this is projects i'll set the active element to projects make sense let's do that so i need to check this when the component did mount so again use use effect should be coming from react yep it is not auto imported so i need to import that let's import that control space uh -huh, imported put the dependency array empty so that this function will only be executed when the component did mount okay so i need to get the path name and how can i get the path name i'll get the path name using this use router hook use router which is coming from react router dom no next router so use router let's see my auto import come on you can do that no so import use router from next slash router cool use this use router i only need the path name so path name just destructure this cool and then inside this use effect just check if the path name is same as the home route path name which will be a string is equal to equal to equal to is same as the home route in that case i'll change the set active to what about set active item about cool save this let's see okay so let me refresh look at this i have this about i have this projects if i click on this projects i have this resume okay but we still have a bug what is that so if the user directly goes to a route let's say projects route projects route and enter look at this we don't have any active element and that is because i'm only checking for the home route so let's check for the other ones so copy this copy this path name this is projects projects and if this is projects in that case i'll set this to projects and if the path name is resume in that case i'll set this to resume capital resume cool save this the problem should be fixed okay and now i'll make this nav item a separate component so let's go at the top and create a component const nav item you can create this in a separate file but as this is a part of navbar i'll put this in the same file just an arrow function oh what the heck arrow function return some jsx okay so what i need to return just copy all of this thing just active element to this parenthesis cut this or just copy this put this inside this return nice i will have a lot of error so first of all i need to get some properties and now as we are using typescript we can validate the properties so inside this nav item it returns a react functional component right so functional component should be auto imported from react yep it returns a functional component and then the way you can specify the properties which is coming is by using this generic just put a curly brace and let's define the types which are coming so i need the active item active item which will be a string and then 
the set active item which will be a function which will be a function and then the name of the element which will also be a string and then anything else yeah the route which will also be a string save this cool and now let's destructure this see the power of typescript so just put a curly brace and then control and space look at this i need the active item and again control space name anything else route and then the set active item okay let's substitute this the about i don't need the hard coded about instead i need the name uh -huh, not a name name uh -huh, why this curly brace okay cool so if the active item is not equal to equal to name in that case i return the jsx and if this is not the name i return null so null just some basic ternary operator and then the route this age rep will be substituted by the route so put a curly brace the route and again why curly brace because we are executing javascript inside jsx save this my nav item is ready and let's put this nav item okay just remove this active element all of this active element is long junk of codes okay just put active element no active item no 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 nav item <laughs> nav item and let's see the power of typescript look at this you have an error and that is because the hover over this the type is missing the following properties active item set active item name route okay so control and space active item this is my active item of course the state variable and then the set active item this is my function the set active item that is cool anything else yep name for the first one this is about and the route for the about route this is home route right yes so i have this nav item for the about just copy this couple of times for the projects and the resume change this to projects the route is slash projects and then for the third one this is resume and the route is slash resume so just save this and let's see just refresh the page resume about about wow what is going on here i am passing resume as the name projects as the name inside my nav item on click set oh i need to change this name so this is inside a curly brace name and also a set active item to name you might have noticed that save this it should work fine refresh the page yeah for resume about projects let me just zoom in just click on about this is my bye bye world which is our index page click on projects projects page beautiful let's add some tailwind css okay so just target this parent div inside this parent div i have my active item and all the other elements let's close this div cool so let's target this parent div and add some class names so i want this active element at the left and all the other items at the right so just use flex and then justify between so that it gets maximum space in between the items justify between cool give some padding around 5 unit let me just make this side by side so that i can see the design okay let's go for the mobile screen cool let's add some vertical padding py around 3 unit add some margin around 3 unit vertically save this let's see mm -hmm. looks good increase the font size for the active item target the span and add text extra large excel and just add a border so border bottom around 4 pixel save this and then for the rest of the nav items just target this parent div and just add some class name what is this font large this is not font large it, it should be text large you might have noticed that okay and the border color of this span should be green so just go back to your active element and add border green or cute green border green save this just remove this text red and just go back to the large screen it looks good i just need to increase the font size for the large screen and on hover i want this text to be green let's do that so just go inside the span and from the medium screen i want so from the medium screen i want the text to be 2xl 2xl not wxl 2xl and then just go back to your nav item and target this span And add some class names. So class name on hover that takes to be green. Green, cool. Save this. Anything else? Yeah, looks good. Hover over this. Fine. I think I need some more space in between this about and resume. Like this, it's a game of padding and margin, guys. 
hardest part for a front end web developer so just go inside this div and make this space x space x around 5 save this it uh, looks better anyway that's it for this video in the next video we are gonna cover some fundamental topics of next js like get server side props get static props api folder okay so in this video we are gonna create this about page we are also going to talk about some of the fundamental topics of next js like get server side props get static props api folder and all so this will be an interesting video and by the way guys this is my final product and this is my ongoing project which is this bye bye world so so far we have created this sidebar this nav bar and this bye bye world so in this video we are going to convert this bye bye world to this beautiful about component or about page about page yeah so let's see how can we make this so inside this about page i have two sections one is this about me and then this services so what are the services i offer or i am good at so this front end development back end development api and all okay so obviously we are going to create a component let's say service component or service card every component is a single service card and then you can pass the props individually or a better approach will be make an array of javascript objects where every object is a service and then just map over the array and render the service component so you will be creating an array of objects where every service is an object so go back to your array not array code uh -huh. let's create the array of objects so let's name this data so inside your root directory data dot ts which will hold all our datas so the name of the array is services so services this will be an array and i'm also going to export this so that i can import this in my about page so export cool now inside the services array every object will be a service so let's create an object so every service should have a title a description and an icon so let's create our first service which is title let's say front end developer and then about which will be my description some lorem blah 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 and then an icon and this icon is coming from the react icons package so just import an icon from this react icons package import something from react icons slash ri the provider and the name of the icon is ri computer line or something like that computer line save this cool and just put this ri computer line as this icon beautiful so this is my one service ready i'll have a bunch of services but now i'm also using typescript so let's take the advantage of typescript but before that let's see what's the problem without typescript let's see you are creating another service so just copy this and paste this here beautiful and now you made a typo this is not title this is title loo and then let's say this title loo is not a string you made this something called one two three but look at this javascript does not complain about this like everything is fair in lab word and javascript but we don't want that we want to make this strongly typed array so let's create an interface interface is a part of typescript you can refer interface as as custom type well the definition of interface will be something like interface describes the shape of an object that's it let me show you so let's create an interface so interface the name of the interface is service but I like to use i as the prefix so that I can recognize this as interface i service and then a brace ok cool let's define the shape so I'll have a property which is title the type of the title should be string cool and then about which will also be the string and then icon now what is the type of this icon it should be something like react icon or icon type but how can you find the type of a component huh? how can you find that ok let me show you a trick so just hover over a component in this case our react icon this ri computer line just control and click look at this this is my source code look at the name of the page this is index.d.ts and then the type is icon type so colon icon type look at this ri computer line colon icon type so type is icon type so just copy this and go to your data.ts and import this import in a curly brace icon type from react icon so obviously cool and just grab this icon type and put it as a type of icon save this cool and now just set the type of this array so services put a colon this should maintain the array of this i service save so i service which is our interface and just an array cool look at this oh the name of the interface nice 
and now look at this we have an error so now typescript says uh -huh, the message is title loop does not exist in type i service did you mean title yeah bro i mean title the title now we have another error just hover over this look at this type number is not assignable to type string remember this title should have a type string but in this case this is number so just make this title and now the error is gone so that's the beauty of typescript okay so just save this and put this interface in a different file so that I can import this in my about component about page about page not component a file name called type.ts okay put this here also export this beautiful and this icon type should be auto imported let's see yep imported icon type from react icon and go back to your data.ts and import this iService interface control space should be auto imported yep auto imported i services from dot slash type and remove this react icon we don't need that okay cool so this is our basic shape now let me just copy an array of services okay coming back in a second okay so i have an array so just remove this dummy objects and put my beautiful array yep i need to import the icon so at the top import the icons nice okay so this is exactly the same shape Every object contains this icon, title and about and notice that inside this about I have this b tag b means bold in html so this html this wrapper will be rendered in bold font to it and then this css in bold this react.js in bold you know just some extra focus on my skills on your skills I should say so just create your own array with your own skills and if you want to use this data.ts I'll put the link in the description box okay save this cool and now just go to your index.tsx which is our home page which holds our about page lot of page so index.tsx cool so inside this index.tsx just import our services array so that i can map over this so import from dot dot slash data the name of the array is services cool just log this inside our client log client means client side rendering by the way because we are gonna see how server side rendering works in this video Cl oh not client services okay save this let's see so let's go back to the project and refresh the page which is localhost 3000 refresh we don't need to refresh and then go to console okay look at this i have an array array of objects array of services and then i have this front end development about and then this icon look at this ri computer line which is a functional component now this method perfectly suits our app but let me show you this in a different way which is called server side data fetching i really want to show you this method as this is one of the fundamental features of next.js like this server side data fetching this api endpoint and all so let's do it but before that let's imagine this data this bunch of objects is coming from a database and you have created an API endpoint to fetch the data so let's do it just imagine this this data is coming from a database and you have created an API so how can you create an API endpoint you have to create a file inside your API folder so inside these pages inside this API look at this I have this hello.ts this means this hello is the endpoint so just go back to your browser and then go to your localhost 3000 and go to your URL and then just put api slash hello it should return you something look at this i have this response name john doe so whatever file you created inside this api folder will be converted to an endpoint how cool is that okay so let's do it delete this hello.ts but again guys in our app it does not really make any sense to create this endpoint to get the static content okay but i want to show you because this is a Next.js project for beginners and you need to know the fundamentals of Next.js I love Next to be honest so let's create a file inside this API folder let's name this services so new file services it means the endpoint name is services.ts cool so let's create the endpoint export we also need to export this cause in the build time Next.js will compile this endpoint export default typical request response so request response and arrow function Cool. now you can set the type of this request so type of the request is next request next api request sorry 
and the response is next API response dog is barking it's 2.39 am anyway next API response cool I also need to import this I don't know why auto import does not work sometimes like I know why it does not work but why it doesn't work anyway so now inside this you can check if the request is get post delete or update by default it will be a get request and we also need a get request in this context cause we want to fetch the data from the server so just grab the services array import now you can just imagine this services array is coming from a database from dot dot slash dot dot slash data and the name of the array is services cute services okay now if you get a get request on this url we will respond this with this services array so response res dot status the status of the request is 200 if successful in this case it will be successful every time because you are just getting the static content and then send this as a response so dot json convert this to json services cool but before that let me just log this out i want to show you something log services so this will be logged in the server let's see the endpoint name is services just go to your browser it should work api slash services enter let's see aha uh -huh, look at this i have the response but notice that i don't have the icon why just go back to your server close this sidebar where is my console log yep look at this the icon is functional component but this express api does not know anything about the react icon it has no idea about what is react component and all this stuff so it basically omits the data and just filter out this title and about right so what i mean is in this particular context where you have this react component as the value this thing will not work so you just need to go back to our first approach which is this one just import this as object as plain object and then just map over this but that's the concept of api guys okay we just need to create a file inside your api folder and it will automatically be converted to an api endpoint and now let's see server side data fetching so just close this close all the unnecessary files close this close this close this close this index.tx open this cool so in our next js app we can use three types of data fetching technique one is get server side props second one is this get static props and third one is get static paths so let's see how this get server side props and get static props works so you have an endpoint which offers the service right this servers.ts let's use this endpoint so inside this index.tx to use our get server side props we need to create a function which is called get server side props as simple as that actually make this function outside of this default index uh -huh. okay the name of the function is get server side props get server side props now it will get a context which is called page context which will give you the information about your route the page the type of the context is get server side props context get server side props context yep that's a typical typescript thing now we don't need this context here but what is important is you just need to return a specific shape from this get server side props and the shape is an object and in this object you need to put a property which is called props and this props will be your props so the result inside this function so whatever calculation you make inside this function inside the server side function i should say will be passed as the props and then this props will be passed to this page so inside this index page you can just grab this props as simple as that okay so let's do some logic inside this get server side props function uh -huh. so basically we want to make a request to our services endpoint and just grab our services data and then pass this services data as props and inside this props i can get access the services data so let's do it i'll be using fetch now remember this fetch is not your browser fetch this is your node.js fetch because whatever is happening inside this get server side props function will be executed in your server not on your client fetch the url is let me just copy this this localhost api service copy this copy this copy this put it here beautiful so this will return me a promise handle this using await also i need to make this asynchronous function okay that is cool so just grab this data as response and then convert this to json so const data is res.json this will also return me a promise so handle this using await cool and then just pass this data as services since so this props 
the key is services and the value is data dot services beautiful i also want to make a console log so that i can show you some interesting thing console log uh -huh, server and then this is services services cool save this refresh the page go back to your home page refresh the page and go back to your console look at this I have the data inside our server let me just uh, expand this cool so now basically I can grab this data from our props so just go back to your page destructure this so services because this is the value coming through these props this props the key is the services so I can grab this as services and just console log as client C L I E N T cool save this go back to your page now when you refresh the page the whole page will be revealed and everything will be console log in the server look at this I have the server and I also have the client but now just go back to another route let's say this projects click on projects I have my projects now again go back to your about and now just go back to your server look at this I only have the server data look at this I have the server data the page revealed and then I have the server data now what does it mean so this function is executed every time the page is refreshed you can try again so just go back to another route let's say this time resume and then again go back to your about look at this look at your server we have this server data right so it means whenever you go back to this page this particular index page the home page this function will be re-executed this get server side props so what are the use cases where can you use that one advanced use case is the home page of your e-commerce site let's say your home page is built using machine learning and that machine learning data is updated with the user's interaction so in that case you need to rebuild the page every time user refresh the page right so that's an advanced use case you can also use this in your social media feed so every time the user refresh the page the feed should be rebuilt so that's an use case of get server side props now just tell me do i need this get server side props in our app in this particular app we are only getting some static content from the database i mean not database but imagine this is coming from a database do i really need that because this is ultimately the static content so for this you have something called get static props how can you use this very simple just copy this function this is exactly the same we just need to change the name of the function so just copy this uh -huh, sorry 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 okay the name of the function is get static props so get static props it will also get the page context but the type is get static prop context props context cool just save this everything is same but this function will be executed one time it will be called only during the build of this project that's it but in development mode it will be executed every time you refresh the page just like your get server side props let me show you so this is my server again let me just comment this out cause it will give you an error if you use both both the data fetching techniques comment this out cool so save this refresh the page and now just go back to your resume go back to about look at your server uh -huh. this is your client this client will be executed only one time and that is because when you refresh the page it reveals your component and this component let me just remove this client console log for the clearer console save this and now again go back to your resume oh <laughs> let me refresh hot reloading and by the way guys please hit the like button if you're enjoying this project cause this is 3.13 am and i need to record this video so this bye bye words which is our index page go back to resume again go to about look at this this is server again go back to resume go back to about look at this this is again re-executed server so this will be executed every time you refresh the page only in development mode let me show you what happened in the production mode so let me just build this project open another tab so npm run build this is a comment to build the project and guys make sure your localhost 3000 server is running if you are building this project with me this localhost 3000 cause this build will be making a request on this server on this particular api endpoint and this server should be running let's see this is creating an optimized production build 
can you see this look at this data this icon title about this server this server is the same console log which is this server so what does it mean it means it executed this function during the build time and now let's run this production ready build so close the other server terminate the job and go back to another terminal and npm run start which is the command to run your production build so npm run start look at how fast this is and just refresh the page boom like in a second refresh the page boom projects resume about anyway the point is just go back to your server and see the console you can't see any console log why because this function is executed only when the build time that's it so that's what i wanted to show you so just close this development server now where can you use this where can you use this get static prop function you can use this in a page which is completely static or the data which is coming to that page is completely static let's say your faq page frequently asked question or your portfolio or a blog there are a lot of use cases so let's again run the development server npm run dev cool and by the way guys during the production this local 3000 should be coming through an environment variable cause in your production there is nothing called local 3000 this video is getting longer in the next video we are going to render our about component not component about page okay so again go back to our first approach which is our which is just import the javascript object and render over this so yeah we have covered a lot of things of next days in this video if you have enjoyed this if you have any feedback please let me know see you in the next video i need to make some maggie bye so let's continue making this about page in the last video i have created this data which is this data.ts and here I have this services array oh my VS code is damn slow okay so I have this services array let me just expand this okay so in this video I just need to map over the services array and render this in a component so let's see how can we do this and by the way guys this is my final product and this is my ongoing project which is this bye bye world I just need to replace this bye bye world so I have this description which is something about me which is the h6 tag or paragraph tag and after that I have this div which wrap our service component and then I just need to show service component fairly simple go to the code go to this index.tsx and by the way guys notice that I have commented out all these data fetching techniques you can use this as a reference okay I can't access these services from the props okay cool remove this console log nice let's create the skeleton you know this bye bye world put an h5 which holds our about let's copy this about i am currently parsing btech degree blah 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 should i put my 75 percent attendance here okay put this h5 nice save this cool after this h5 let's put a div and inside this div i have a h6 which says what i offer or what are the skills i am good at what I offer cool after this HC let's put another div which will wrap our components okay inside this div let's grab the services array this services array which is coming from this dot dot slash data and just map over this dot map get every service as service and create another component let's say service card service card I need to create this component and I'll pass the service oops ah service as service a full object okay cool let's create the component go to this components folder components service card the tsx cool rafc which will give me the boilerplate of a functional component nice here i need to get the services and let's use typescript why not so I can define the type of the properties so for that I need to use the generic of the functional component so this service card returns functional component it should be imported from react function component yep so inside this generic I mean inside this angle bracket define the props so inside a curly brace the props is services not services service and it is the type of this i service interface remember this i service interface we have created in the last video inside this type.ts I have this i service I just need to import this i service let's see my auto import should do my job i service yep bro cool 
i service is imported and now i can destructure this so first of all control space what are the properties are available service and from service again destructure this again inside this curly brace space control and space look at the power of typescript have my icon which i need about i also need that title i definitely need that okay so inside this div first show the icon and then again put another div inside the h4 i need to show the title so inside this curly brace title and why curly brace because i am executing javascript inside ga6 and then a p which will show my about cool save this i think my skeleton is ready let's see aha uh -huh, look at those 3000 refresh this hot loading is very slow oh service card is not defined i have not imported that go to index.tsx yep control and space my auto import should do my job yep bro imported cool let's make this side by side so that i can design go for the mobile screen cool my hot reloading finally did the job okay so i have my data and now let's put some sexy tailwind go to this parent div which is my index page go to the parent div add some padding margin flex whatever we can class name first of all make this flex i want the direction column so flex column padding horizontal 6 units so ps6 not ps px6 and pt1 padding at top and then go to this h5 add class name add margin y3 so margin at top 3 unit font medium and i think this is all for this h5 go to this div add class name padding at all side 4 unit and by the way guys all the codes will be available in the description box so if anything goes wrong in your code especially in the tailwind css you can just check that out margin at top 5 unit i love tailwind by the way just add background color bg gray 400 cool save this go to the inner div add some class name class name and this div which is this inner div which contains all our services i'll make this a grid so for that use grid a class name grid and from the medium screen it will be two columns grid so medium or large make this large it will be better so lg colon grid columns two so one row will contain two service component and just add gap around six unit so gap between the elements nice add some gap in between the elements and now i wrap this service card with a div i know it doesn't make any sense but to apply framer motion animation on the service card you need to apply the framer motion properties on a html element so as i am going to animate this service card which is a react component i can't just use this framer motion animation on this service card i'll talk about this more in the framer motion part but for now just wrap this with a div div cool uh, my vs code my vs code is damn slow cool and now add some class name on on this div class name okay so from the large screen it will take one column so column span one span one bg gray 200 border rounded so rounded lg or md whatever you prefer i'll go for lg save this nice and now look at this this right padding and the left padding it looks ugly so just remove this padding and to remove this padding we just need to use negative margin we have used this technique before so just go to this div which div this one this bg gray 400 add some inline style style two curly brace and margin left a negative 1.5 rem 1.5 rem copy this and also apply this for the margin right margin right cool save this nice target this h6 what i offer at class name margin y3 unit font bold bold is better increase the text size so text excel save this only thing i hate about this next js is this hot reloading time it takes around 10 or 15 seconds to reload the page okay so what i offer just use some letter spacing so for that i can use the class tracking tracking wide or wider go for wide cool so i guess i am done with this page and now let's go to this component which is the service card so control and click which is a nice trick to go to the service card component okay so service card i'm here so target this div the parent div at class name definitely i need to add some padding so p2 make this flex container so add flex 
item center of course and add space in between the elements so space x4 cool target this icon i just need to increase the size class name uh -huh, save this with around 12 height also 12 and just change the text color so text green text color means the icon's color because this is after all the svg icon so text green my cute green nice save this and then go to this div i don't need to apply anything here go to this h4 and add class name bold font bold font bold save this nice and now notice that this about this about i need to show this as pure html because now this is showing this b tag which is which should be bold so for that i can use dangerously set inner html and this is an extra layer to save you from xss attack if you want to know more about xss attack i'll put a link in the description box so you can just check that out okay so to use that go to this p tag and you need to pass a property which is dangerously set in your html yep and here you need to pass an object so for that let's create a function which will return the object much cleaner code that will be so const name this create markup create markup there is a nice snippet for the arrow function i just need to use that look at this this is nine zero wow so just return an object with the key html and the value is about and this about is stored in my props so i can definitely use that and then use this create markup function inside this dangerously set in html call this remove this about and the p tag make this self closing cool save this and here it is it's in bold cool go for the large screen it should show two service in a row yep we are almost done with the design the last thing i want is to give this div a flex grow property so that it grows to the full height and remove this white background because right now this is looking ugly so for that just go to index.tsx and target this div this bg gray 400 and add flex grow flex grow and also go to the parent div which is this the ultimate parent i should say also add flex grow save this nice and now to get this rounded border at the bottom just go to the app underscore app.tsx you need to use overflow hidden underscore app.tsx okay go to this div which wraps our component and just use overflow hidden let's see yep beautiful so that's it for this video if anything i need to refactor i'll do that in the last video of this series so yeah that's it in the next video we are going to design this resume page this resume page let it rebuild resume page okay so bye see you in the next video hey guys welcome back i'm smith from backbench code so in the last section we have finished this about page in this section we are going to create this resume page click on this resume i have this blank page i'm going to convert this to this one this is my final product let's plan the layout so i have this two main section one is this education and experience at the top and then at the bottom i have this language and tools so basically i can make a grid for this top section and then also apply the same grid for this bottom section and then i can create an array just like the services array and then just map over this and render a component nice we can do that so let's go back to a code editor so let's start with creating the interface for this bar what i mean by bar is the skill bar so name of the skill the level of the skill and this icon so let's do that let's create the interface first so for that i'll go to types.ts so export interface the name of the interface is iSkill okay so every skill should have a name a label and an icon name which should be string the type should be string and then label you can make this number but i'll go for string it will be easier to apply the css okay we'll see later and then an icon icon the type is icon type save this and let's create the array for that we need to go to data.ts data.ts okay just close this one let's create this new array so i'll be creating two arrays one for these languages and one for these tools just like this one one for these languages and frameworks and one for these tools so let's do this export const the name of the array is languages the type of the array is iSkill 
should be auto imported let's see nope let's try again look at this i skill is imported so this will be an array of i skill and then create the array okay so let's create an object name is python python and then label let's say i know python 70 percent or just put 70 and then an icon i will go for the same icon which is this white circle you can go for the defined icons whatever you prefer but i would recommend you to go for this one icon so the icon name is bs circle field let's see my auto import should do my job nope let's import this so import bs whatever from react icons slash bs and the icon name is bs circle field cool so that's my one object that's my one skill and now i'm gonna copy an array so let's copy that here it is put a comma and paste this cool i just need to change this to percentage let me quickly change this to percentage and 80 percent cool cool so look at this this is the same shape every object has an icon name and label and let me just create a separate array for the tools just like this one copy this paste this cool Look at this, this is the identical array just like this language is. I have also exported this and it has an icon, name and label. The icon is the same icon, BS circle field and everything is same. And by the way guys, if you want to use this data, I will put this data.ts in the description box along with the full source code. So if anything goes wrong in your code, you can just check that out. Okay, so I have the array, right? Now let's render this. So just go to resume.tsx. Yes, this is my resume.tsx. Oh, I need to save the data.ts. Oh, save this, save this, save this. Go to resume.ts. Cool. So, remove this resume page. I need to create a grid. Let's make this side by side. Cool. Okay, so at the top, I'll put my education and experience. Education and experience. Comment this out. And then the languages and tools. Cool. So, let's create a grid for this education and experience. So, div. With a class name grid and from the medium screen put grid columns 2 so grid columns 2 and just put a gap in between the grid so gap 6 oops tab that's it i have my grid ready inside this grid put a div for the education so div h5 a text is education cool under this h5 i'll put a div which will hold the details about my education under this div, I'll put h5 and the text is my college name, which is Academy of Technology. Or you know what, I should put my degree first. So this is Computer Science Engineering. Computer. Cool. And after this h5, I'll put a p, which will hold my college name. So Academy of Technology. To 2021. Cool. And then put another p, which will hold a little bit more details about my education. Let me just copy this out. Aha, I am currently pursuing my BTEC degree, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Okay, so I have this education part here. Let's put some style. So let's target this age 5 and put class name MY3. So margin at top and bottom, 3 unit. Takes 2 Excel. Increase the text size. And give some font to it. So font bold. That's it for this one. Go to the second age 5 and put class name my2 margin at top and bottom text excel and font bold oh i can type bold okay then target this paragraph just some you know, vanilla css that's the beauty of tailwind font semi bold cool target this second paragraph and add class name what margin y3 that's it save this Go for the large screen nice and let me just copy this div again for the experience so from this div to this end div and put it again this is inside a grid so just change the text okay so i've changed the text and now i should see my second div here nice i just need to give some padding on this parent div go to the parent div i'm not talking about the grid the ultimate parent is 
dp4 just give px6 and py2 and i've also noticed that i need to change the text color for the whole document so just go to global.css for a second scan flow global.css and target this body and change the color to 354358 save this it should be better okay Coming back to resume.tsx, close these files. Okay, cool. Just close this div. I'm done with this education and experience. And then for these languages and tools, I need to create another grid. Similar grid, of course. So div with a class name grid, gap of 6. From medium screen, it will have a grid of columns 2. Nice. Press tab. My image should fire. Cool. let's put a div for these languages and then I'll put a div for the tools so div under this div I'll put a h5 with some class name so my3 my m8 is in action text to excel font bold that's it the text is languages and frameworks nice and then after this h5 I'll put a div which will hold my bars and this div with a class name my2 cool and here i need to show my bars so i need to import my data which data languages and tools so let's see my auto import should do my job inside a curly brace languages yep languages should be imported from data yep so if your auto import does not work just manually import this so languages dot map get every element as lang or languages or language why not language and then render a component let's say bar bar let me just increase the font size cool so bar and i'll put the language as data so data the property name which is language the whole object and the key which should be unique in this case this is language dot name cool and now let's create this bar component so just go to this components folder create a component named bar.tsx cool rafc which will give me my dummy component my boilerplate okay so let's add typescript so bar should return functional component bar functional component should be imported from react let's see yeah function component and then inside the generic let's define the types of the properties I am getting only one property which is data and this data has a type which is i skill should be imported from interface yep imported and now let's restructure this so from data restructure one level more press control and space i need all of this icon comma label comma name cool for now just show the name nice oh not like this in a curly brace that's it let's import this go to resume.tsx bar control and space my auto import should do my job again beautiful nope not beautiful and now yeah cool so that's it for this languages section let me just copy this div and put it again for the tools cool just need to change the text to tools and softwares this video is all about normal react and tailwind css that's it so just replace these languages to tools should be imported yep imported and then this is language just change this to tool which is not needed but again just for a better code readability tool to tool tool and it is also tool i could have used multi cursor but it's okay fine tool.name let's see nice i have this beautiful grid and let's design this bar so let's make this side by side cool just go to bar.tsx okay cool let's now see how to design this go to this final product it's a little tricky okay look at this i have this two div one is this background and one shows this label and under the second div i have this icon and the name so let's do that just remove this name and put another div with a class name px4 and py1 padding on top and bottom this div is for the label so just add flex make this flex container item center 
so my icon and the text will be centered vertically it should be rounded so rounded full which is just border radius 50 percent and then just add background gradient so bg gradient to r and the color is from green to blue from a cute green and again guys if anything goes wrong in your tailwind css you can just check that out to what blue 400 or 600 go for the 600 and press tab uh -huh. just decrease the font size cool and then under this div i need to show my icon and the name my skill name so under this div let's put the icon and just add a class name margin r3 i could have used space x3 but that's okay and then my name inside a curly brace oh cool save this let's see i have not designed my background div yet but let's see go to this localhost 3000 uh -huh, we are getting the design let's go to this parent div which is my background div and add class name first of all text white and then margin y2 and of course the bg gray 300 and rounded full save this oh look at this and now i just need to adjust the width for that i'll be using an inline css so target this inner div and put style style this is really simple i just need to vary this width so width which is label save this i should see aha beautiful is it end i don't know let's see and guys if i need to refactor anything i'll do that in the last video of this project yeah it looks nice let's go to this final product or in dark mode this is just just beautiful so you know what in the next video i'm gonna do the dark mode okay so that's it for this video and guys please hit the like button please that's the only source of motivation so see you in the next video bye hey guys welcome back i'm Smith from backbench code so in the last video we have created this resume section this nice resume section and in this video we are going to add the dark mode so that you can toggle this between light ui and dark ui and by the way guys this is my final product and this is my ongoing project so whenever i click on this button this change theme it should be toggled to dark mode it's pretty simple using Tailwind CSS. We are gonna follow the proper documentation. So just go to this URL, this tailwindcss.com slash docs slash dark mode. I'll put the link in the description box. So just follow the documentation, guys. So it is written here, Tailwind includes a dark variant that lets you style your site differently when the dark mode is enabled. And you can use this dark mode using this dark colon and then whatever color you want. Like this BG gray 800 will be only applied when the dark mode is activated. Cool, that's fair enough. And then it says that the dark mode variant is not enabled in Tailwind by default. So you need to enable this. And how can we enable that? We just need to go to this tailwind.config.js file and then set the dark mode value to media. And another option is available which is called class. Okay, so let's go to this tailwind.config.js file. Tailwind.config.js file. Here it is. And look at this, the dark mode is false. You can set this either media or class. Now when to use media and when to use class, let's see. Okay, so it says the media strategy uses the preferred color scheme, here it is. So it means whenever the dark mode is enabled on the user's operating system, in that case, this dark mode, this dark classes, look at this, this dark hover, bg white, dark bg gray, whatever this is after the dark, the colors will be overwritten by this dark mode. So it is kind of an automatic process, but we want to change this manually, we want to change this using a button. So for that, we can use the class strategy. How? Let's see, here it is, toggling dark mode manually. So it says if you want to support toggling dark mode manually, instead of relying on the operating system preference, just use class strategy instead of the media strategy. Okay, we want that. So let's use class. Let's remove this false, inside a code class, that's it, save this. Okay, so now we need to somehow inject this class in our HTML tree. So let's put this in our HTML root. So just go to this document.tsx, this underscore document.tsx where it is, yeah, inside this pages folder underscore document.tsx, just target this HTML and put the class dark, that's it. And now I can use the dark variant. So let's test this. So just go to the underscore app.tsx 
and change the background color of the sidebar. So this is my sidebar div, apparent div. Okay, so currently the background color is BG white. Let me just increase the font size. I often miss that. Okay, so BG white. Let's use the dark variant. So if the dark mode is enabled, I mean if the dark class is enabled, in that case I'll make this BG black. Yep. Save this. Let's see. I should see my sidebar with a black background. Oh ho, here it is. Okay, now we just need to toggle this dark UI and a light UI using this change theme button. We can do that. The idea is very simple. We just need to alternately add and remove the dark class from the HTML tree. That's what you need to do. Okay, and look at this. Here is a code snippet provided by Tailwind. So basically it is saying that you can store your current theme in your local storage. And whenever the page is loaded based on your current theme, you can add this dark class in your document element or just remove this dark class. But this is so messy, we can do this in a better way. So for that, we need to install a package which is called next theme. Aha, dark mode is activated. Let me just remove that. Cool. So here is the package called next themes and let's see how it works. Okay, so we just need to wrap our whole app using this theme provider. So it is based on a context and then it provides a hook. Let's see here it is the use theme. So this use theme returns theme and the set theme. Theme is the current theme and the set theme is the setter function. So using this set theme you can set the theme. Very simple. Using the set theme you can set the theme. Wow. I love react hooks. Okay. Here is an example, set theme, light theme. So basically it injects a light and a dark class in your HTML tree. That's what it does. Very simple to use. And you can also pass this attribute. Okay, let's do that. So just install this next theme. Go to your terminal. And by the way, I have configured this G cell. I had to format my computer cause the hard disk was corrupted. But my computer is still slow. Okay, let me just zoom out. Cool. My package is installed, nice. So just go inside this underscore app.tsx. I'm on the underscore app.tsx and just import the theme provider. So import from next themes, cool. Import the theme provider, nice. And just wrap this full app. So just uh -huh, close this div, wrap the full div theme provider, theme provider, cool. And just pass the attribute class. That's it. Nice. And just wrap the div. Beautiful. Save this. Nice. And just go to this underscore document.tsx. We don't need this class dark anymore. Remove this. Cool. And now we just need to use the use theme hook to get the current class. So for that, I'll go to the sidebar.tsx. Here is our button to toggle this between light UI and dark UI. This, where it is? This change theme. Actually, make this toggle theme. What is this change thing? Be professional, bro. Toggle thing. Just go to a top. I close this whole div. Cool. So import from next theme. Themes, not theme. Use theme. Cool. And inside the sidebar, const let's destructure something. I don't know what to destructure. Okay, use theme. Cool. Let's see what it provides, control and space. Okay, we have the theme and then we have the set theme also. That's it, save this. And let's create a function to toggle this. So const change mode or change theme, change theme. An arrow function, so it will just set the theme using the set theme function. So it will just check if the theme is light in that case, it will make this dark, else it will make this light. So on the first occurrence, it will be undefined. In that case, it will set to dark and then it will set to light. And now we just need to trigger this function whenever the button is clicked. Change theme, go to this button, add an on click handler on this button, on click. Oh, the name of the function is change theme. That's it. Save this. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It should work. Go to this localhost 3000, refresh the page. Yeah, here it is, my light theme, cause the class is undefined. And then click on this toggle theme. Here it is. Hey, hey. 
look at this i can toggle this between dark ui and light ui and now let's quickly change the colors so for that i'm going to add some colors in our tailwind.config file so inside our colors block let's add something called black or dark dark let me quickly define those colors and by the way guys i'll put the source code in the description box so you can just check that out so at default this is 0 1 0 1 0 1 let me just copy that copy that copy that copy that 2 0 2 1 2 5 that's it just save this and now just change the colors so let's start with the background so for that just go to this document.tsx document.tsx cool okay so for the dark mode it will be still a gradient color but i'll change the colors value so dark colon from dark 500 and again dark to dark 700 save this and let's just quickly check this out refresh the page click on this toggle theme nice let's do the other stuffs so the dark text color white cool and now just go to this underscore app.tsx go to a div and this is not dark bg black it is dark bg dark 500 it might be boring to add those colors so let me just go a little faster just go to this nav bar i don't need to do anything nav bar nice and just go to this components folder go to this bar.tsx this is bg grade 300 right so just go to this tailwind config.js we don't have anything called 300 so let's quickly add the 300 the 300 is same as the 200 i don't want to mess with the colors now so just leave that like that okay go to a sidebar so wherever this is bg gray just make this dark i mean for the dark mode this is bg dark 200 cool so gray 200 to dark 200 just copy this and for the 300 just make this dark 300 where was the 300 oh it was on the bar oh sorry anyway let's copy that put it here bg black bg black that is fine the buttons color is fine save this just go to bar.tsx here it is just make this bg gray sorry bg dark 300 a lot of gray lot of darks uh-huh save this cool yeah seriously cool and now just go to the service card let's see what i need to change here i don't need to change anything beautiful just go to this project section or oh, not projects resume section resume.tsx anything i need to do here nope anyway save this and just go to the index page index.tsx anything i need to change here mm -hmm. yeah, i got a bg grip 400 so just copy this I don't need to copy that as the dark mode and for dark mode this is bg dark what 100 it is fine save this and this is again bg gray 200 here it is just copy this just add the dark variant this is bg gray not gray sorry dark 200 save this mm -hmm. i think it is okay fine let's see toggle theme toggle theme so this is my dark mode just click on this about this blue color i need to change that but i'll do that later now one important thing this dark mode by default is only applied for the colors see if you want to control other css properties like box shadows using the dark mode class in that case you need to enable that property so for that let's see the documentation mm -hmm. here it is enabling other utilities look at this you need to extend that property and add this dark variant let's do that so here in this case we want to vary the box shadows for the dark ui and the light ui so just go to this tailwind.config.js tailwind.config.js okay so here is my variant we need to extend that so box shadow colon and then inside an array the variance you want to be activated this is dark cool and now let's define some box shadows so let's go inside this theme and define the box shadow so some custom box shadows i want to add let's say custom light the name of the box shadow let me quickly add some box shadow 0 0 10 pixel the value is 3 1 3 1 3 1 and for the light 
this is custom light oh sorry custom dark for the dark i'll be using two type of box arrow so five pixel five pixel 10 pixel okay so here it is just save this what is wrong here oh i need to put a comma save this cool so i have my box shadows and let's add the box shadows so for that just go to this underscore app dot tsx and just go to a wrapper of the sidebar cool let's add the box shadow which is shadow shadow custom light and for the dark version i mean for the dark ui if the dark variant is activated i should say so custom shadow custom dark uh -huh, here it is just copy this shadow custom light and shadow custom dark and also apply this for the second div save this let's see i should see a better ui aha uh -huh, i have my box shadow click on this toggle theme i don't have my box shadow i think no i don't have my box shadow why because for the dark variant this is shadow custom dark uh -huh, interesting this is shadow custom dark just go to this just go to this tailwind.config.js oh it is 10 pixel save this yeah so i had a typo it should be 10 pixel not negative 10 pixel cool so that's it for this video i need to change the colors but you should show some creativity to come up with some great colors you can watch the drivel awards for the dark ui inspiration but i surely need to change that Okay, so that's it for this video and by the way guys, thank you to all my 500 subscribers. Thank you for supporting this channel. I have a dream to make this channel much much bigger. So please keep supporting. See you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Smith from Backbench Kodai. So in the last section, we have added a dark mode in our app. And in this section, we are going to create this project page. This nice project page. Here it is. I'm not going to add the animation in this section because it's a part of Framer Motion. And I'll make a separate video on Framer Motion. So let's see what we have in this projects page. Okay, so at the top I have this nav bar. Using that I can filter out the projects. For example, these are all the projects. And if I click on React, these are all the projects made using React. And then if I click on Mongo, these are all the projects made using MongoDB. And then Express and Django. Okay, so one project can belong to multiple categories. What I mean by that is, just look at this Twitter clone. This Twitter clone made using React. And the backend is made using Django. Mongo Django. Nice. And then if I click on a project, these are all the details about the project. So the project's image, the GitHub link, the deployed version link, the title of the project, some description about the project. And then these are all the tech tags. Tech tags. Tech tag means what are the other popular libraries used in this project or, or some key points like REST API, authentication and all these stuff. You get the idea. Let me show you another project. Just go to all. These are all my projects. So click on this algorithm visualizer. Look at this, this is React, Firebase and Framer Motion. And then, anything else? Okay, let's talk about the layout. So at the top, I can create this nav bar easily. Easily, not easily, but we can create that. And then I have this project section. It is scrollable, it means it has a fixed height. So the approach will be again same. We'll be creating an array of objects. And then we'll just map over this and render a separate component. So that's the idea. Let's go back to the code editor. Okay, so first of all, let's create the interface, right? So let's just go to types.ts nice and create the interface first so export interface let's name this i project so every project has a name which is a string it has a description which is also string it will have an image so image path or image url image path which will be a string and then deployed url url which will also be a string just copy this this is github url and then the category and by category i mean the nav bar so this react mongo whatever mongo express django mongo django so this will be a string cool and then the key take key technologies i don't know if it is a good name or not so by key take i mean this one if I click on algo visualizer this react firebase framer motion some additional technologies okay oh this category will be an array of string because one project may belong to multiple category and key tag will also be a string save this cool and now we can make a beta type for this category instead of the string because this will be also used for the filtering part 
if I click on Mongo Express, this will be also used for the filtering part. So this is a sensitive data, we don't want any typo here. So for that we can create our own type which will only hold the category. So let's create our own type export type is the keyword and the name of the type is category. Cool. So it will be either react or node or express or I don't know Django. Anything else? Uh -huh, Mongo, Django Mango. Uh -huh, that's it for now. And then I replace the string with this category. Cool. Save this. So now if I put something else in this category field like instead of react if I put react js TypeScript will say hey you can't use that. Okay that is cool my interface is ready and now just go to data.ts and let's create a data. I'll be creating one object and then I'll just copy and paste. Cool so just export this out. The name of the data is projects. The name of the array not name of the data. Okay it will be an array. And the type of the array will be i project should be auto imported let's see my auto import has done the job so i projects is imported from dot slash types that is cool thanks to my auto import so it's an object press control and space and look at this i can put a name the name is whatever some random hey you know what let me just copy the data the raw data so here is my one project my one object Okay, so every project has a name, some description, blah, 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 and then this image path. This image is coming from the slash images slash copy.jpg. I have not created this images folder yet. I'll be creating this folder inside this public folder. Cause remember I told you all the files inside this public folder will be hosted as static. So what I mean by static is look at this varsal.svg. If I just go to the URL, so my local was 3000 and just go to varsal.svg, I should see the SVG. Here it is. So I want all my images to be static. So for that I'll be creating a folder inside this public. You can just put all the images inside this public folder but I want this to be organized. So for that let's create a folder called images. I'll put all the images here but for now just continue. Okay. So then after this image part I have this deployed URL which is just a normal URL. And then this github URL which is again a normal URL. And then this category. So this is an array which has react. So if I just put uh, you know node.js look at this TypeScript is showing an error it says hey node.js is not assignable to type category so you can't just use node.js you can use node in fact if you just press control and space you can see all the options django express mongo node react cool so this project is made only using react because this is only front-end project and then I have the key takes so react chart.js material ui all the other technologies so just save this this is my one object it means this is my one project and let me just copy all the other objects okay so here it is my other projects and by the way guys if you want to use this data i'll put this data in the description box in fact i'll put all the source code in the description box so you can just use that and i'll also put the images so if you want to use the images you can definitely use that cool so this is again the same data look at this i have the name image path deployed url github url category description key take okay so just save this and let's just put the images drag all to this images folder cool and by the way guys make sure your image name is correct look at this this is dev.jpg and dev.jpg here it is my dev.jpg so just close this our data is ready just save the file, close the file, close this type.ts, go to projects.ts. Inside this pages folder, have this projects.tsx, not ts, come on. Okay, so let's design the layout. Remove this projects, cool. So at the top, I'll put a navbar, right? So nav, navbar. I'll add the functionalities later. And then I'll have a div which will hold all my projects. So inside a brace, just grab our project's data, should be auto imported. Oh, this will not work, that is because the component has the same name. So just change this to capital projects. Also change this default to capital projects. Cool. And now just try to auto import this. Should be auto imported from data. Here it is. Cool. So just map over this. 
I'll get every project as project and then inside a div oh my hint I'll show our project card and again I'm wrapping this with a div that is because I need to use my framer motion animation project card cool so let's create this component go to components folder create a new file project card dot tsx rafce cool let's use the type for the typescript so this project card is a functional component should be auto imported yep let's use the generic inside this generic i can define my type so i'll get the property project which is an object and the interface of this object is i project uh -huh, auto imported cool okay so just save this and let's just restructure Oops. okay so from the projects not projects project just get the name actually i need all of this image path control and space category comma control and space deployed url comma control and space description comma control and space control and space control and space key tags save this cool and now just go to projects.tsx import this control and space auto imported cool just pass the data that's why it is showing red pass the project as project cool save this i also need to pass the key the unique what is the unique value this is project.name name is the unique okay so just save this i need to create a grid on this div so just use class name of course grid the grid will be 12 columns grid so grid columns oh my shortcut it's not working 12 a gap of 4 and margin at top and bottom 3 and then just come to this div this inner div and just define how many columns a single div should take so for the mobile screen which is normally the extra small screen it will take all the 12 columns so column span 12 and then from the smaller screen so the breakpoint sm every div will take six columns cool and then from the large screen so lg breakpoint every div will take four column so column span four cool just add a padding p2 at all sides save this nice let's go to project card and let's just show the name for now name and let's see what we have oh ho, here it is I have my grid so one row is showing three columns from the large screen just go to this mobile screen the extra small responsive click on moto g4 aha good every row is showing a single column cool a single column means single project okay so let's add the data in our project card component but before that let's again see the layout because this is slightly complicated okay so this is my single project card and if I click on this, here is some other details, right? So this is again a div and it will be only shown if I click on this. So I can create a state and if the state is true, I'll show this div. And then inside that parent div, I'll have the smaller divs. Div, image, button, paragraph, whatever you want to create. Okay, so let's do that. Just go to this project card. Remove this name. Okay, so first create this one first this image and this paragraph paragraph or span whatever so image and by the way guys i'll be using the next image component in the next section let's just go step by step okay so the source is image path image path alt is image name or oh, sorry not image name project name i guess only name bro and the class name is what cursor pointer my vs code is again very slow cool and then after that i'll have a paragraph which will show the name of the project name no i can't type name cool save this and just add some class on this paragraph my2 text center normal css cool and then i'll create this second div the second div is this one so if i click on this this is the second div the whole div let's create this one So this div will also be a grid so div dot grid i'm just using emit emit syntax and from the medium screen it will be a grid of columns 2 
grid columns to save this okay so inside this let's create the left section inside this left section i'll have the image so let's copy this image oh okay. cool i don't need this cursor pointer here cool and then inside a div i'll put the github link and the deploy link so an anchor tag the hrep is github url cool i need to use an icon so the icon is ai fill github let's see my auto import should do my job wow yeah it is auto imported i can see that yes look at this ai fill github is imported from react icon slash ai cool and then after that just span span github save this just copy this one again the second one is this deployed url the icon is ai fill project auto imported cool and the text is project nice save this that's my left section is ready let's close this cool go for the right section front end is the hardest part of web development okay so for the right side let's create another div and this will hold my project name so h2 name my description h3 description and then all the key tags right so look at this key tags so this key text this is an array so i just need to map over this and render this key text key text so key text dot map get every data as text and just render a span of oh, my emit is not working again cool inside this span the value is text cool just use a key key is what you can use the index if your list is not getting modified you can use the index as the key but i can just use the take as the key cool save this that's it for the second div so let's close this and then after the second div i'll create an icon to close this div this icon look at this this cross icon so this is a button button i'll be using an icon so md close come on auto import good job the size is 30 so let's see our layout go to localhost 3000 refresh oh ho, ho, ho. okay so now basically i need to hide this second div and i'll be only showing this if i click on this image or the project so if i click on this project i'll show the second div so for that let's create a state so you state you state the state is so detail the name of the state the setter is set so detail you state should be auto imported nice and the initial state this is false cool save this nice and then just show this second div conditionally so if the so detail is true i'll show this second div so just wrap this second div with this condition put this end brace here is it okay no here cool save this nice so if i click on this image this first image so just use an on click so on click i'll set the show detail to true cool and just copy this on click and then just go to this button this button is inside this div by the way inside this second div okay if i click on this button i'll make this false okay let's test this go to localhost 3000 nice so second div is hidden if i click on this image i have my second div which is the details if i click on this icon the close icon nice this is closed uh -huh, test this cool click on this dev talks beautiful and now i need to show this second div above this image component look at this so obviously this is a position of absolute so let's do that go to the second div and set the class name absolute this is from top 0 and left 0 set the g index to 10 20 999 set the height to auto and the width to full means with 100 percent and just add a gap of x 12 so the gap between the grids 
cool save this and as this is absolute i need to make the parent relative this parent no not this parent just go to this projects.tsx and set the wrapper div the div which holds all our projects component and set this div to relative cool save this and now let's see uh-huh close this nice click on this beautiful this is not looking good because i have not used any background color so let's use the background color go to the project card go to the second div so text is black the background color is bg gray 100 cool and for the dark variant the text color is white of course and the background color is bg gray sorry bg dark 100 save this and let's see click on this project nice and by the way guys i have told you that i need to change this blue color because this blue color is looking odd and the reason is i made a typo so just go to this tailwind.config.js and then just go to this dark this is 0a 0b 0e save this cool nice so that's all the hard part is done of this layout now i can use some you know basic css so let's go to this project card project card not projects card i can see the button so let's design this add class name this is absolute from top 3 and right 3 cool this is rounded so rounded full this is padding at all side one unit remove the outline on focus so focus outline none save this so the background color is bg gray 200 and for the dark variant this is bg ops dark 200 save this just open this div the first div which holds our links let's quickly design this div class name clicks justify center margin and top and bottom four space between the items around three unit cool target this anchor tag actually target both the anchor tag because this has the same styles okay so class name flex item center horizontally centered px four unit padding at top and bottom around two unit space between the items around three unit increase the font size so text large at the background color so bg gray 200 just be consistent for the dark variant this is bg dark 200 again done with this div close this open the second div okay name description and key tag let's just see how it is looking nice yeah quite cool i need to add some padding at the parent div i'll do that later just target this name class name Oops. margin at bottom 3 unit takes extra large font weight medium because this is the name it you need to give some weight okay from the medium screen i want the text to be excel sorry to excel target this description there is three tag class name mb3 unit font weight medium cool Target the div which holds our key text. Class name, flex, flex wrap so that it creates a new row. And then margin at top 5 unit. Space x around 2 unit. Text size small. And add some data spacing. So tracking wider. Cool. And then target the span. Add class name. And by the way, guys, if it seems boring, the Tailwind CSS part, you will get the source code in the description box, so you can just copy the styles. Okay, so add padding x 2 unit, padding y 1 unit, margin y 1 unit, bg gray 200, save this. Uh huh, looks better. Change the background color for the dark variant, this is bg dark 200, and just make this rounded. Not fully rounded, but rounded small save this uh huh cool just add some padding at the parent div this parent div add padding to unit at all side cool nice and now just go to this projects.tsx 
and target this div, the single div and add some background color. So BG gray 200. I don't want to skip this UI designing part guys because this is one of the most important part of this project. So I just don't want to skip that. Okay, so for the dark variant, this is BG dark 200 and just give it a rounded border. And I love Tailwind. Save this. Let's see. Uh-huh. I need to give some space at right and left. Okay, we'll fix that. And let's add some padding at this parent div. So for that, just go to this projects.tsx and just target this parent div, parent, a grandfather div. Target this class name. This is px5 and py2. So padding at top and bottom to unit. I want to give this a fixed height. So just use inline CSS style height around 65 viewport height. You can experiment with your layout and give this a good height. And I want this overflow wide scroll. So overflow cool. Save this. Should look better. Nice. Click on this copy trigger. Yeah, it looks nice. Now I need to design this navbar. This cute navbar. I will cover this navbar in a separate section because there are some functionalities I need to add on this navbar. Okay, so that's it. See you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Smith from Backbench Code. So in the last video, we have created this project page. The only part is left is this project navbar. So in this section, we are going to create this project navbar. So let me just go to the final version. Here it is. So this is my project navbar. It looks simple, but I need to add some functionalities here. So let's start by creating the UI. So just go to the component, the projects component, the projects.tsx. Here is my navbar, but I am going to create a separate component for this projects navbar. So just go to the components folder and create projects navbar, the name of the component. The TSX, cool. RAFC, here it is. Nice. And it will return all the nav items, but I am also going to create a separate component for this nav item because I need to add some functionalities on this nav item. Here, this React, Mongo, Express, Django are separate nav item. So let's create a separate component. I'll be creating that component inside this file. Let's name this nav item to underscore RFC again. RFC only. Okay, projects. This is what? Uh huh. Nav item. Let me just zoom in. Cool. Close this sidebar. Nice. So it will just return a list item. Uh huh. Not div. List. Cool. It will also get the value as the property, so we'll just use TypeScript. So this navbar is a functional component. At this point, you are familiar with this. Okay, just use generic. Inside an object, just you know, define the property. Define the type of the property, not property. So value string, but no, it's not string. It will be actually a category because we have also defined the type category, remember? Just go to types.ts. These are all the separate category, React, Node, Express, Django, right? So we are going to specify the type as the category. So this is not string, this is category. Cool. Let me just import this. But auto import did not work. Cool. But remember, we are also using this all as the nav item. This all. And this all is not defined inside this category type. Inside this category type. Right. So we need to use all. It can be all. So small all. And then just grab this value and just destructure this. Cool. And just return this value inside this list item. Cool. Save this. And now we can use this component. So inside this project snapbar, inside the div, I can pass nav item. Aha, uh -huh, nav item, come on, you should do. Let's pass the value. Well, first one is all. Now look at this, if I just misspell this like a triple L, it will give me an error. Like a triple L is not assignable to type react, node express, django, mongo, all. So that's the beauty of TypeScript. Okay, fine. Just copy this, copy this, copy this, copy this, copy this. Just change this to react. Then this is mongo. Then this is django. Anything else? Node. I remove this all. Cool. Save this. Nice. So just go to projects.tsx and import this project snap bar. Remove this nav, we don't need that. Project snap bar. Oops. Save this. Let's see. Go to localhost 3000. And here is my nav bar, all React Mongo Django node. Let's add some sexy tailwind. Go to this project snap bar. 
who is div the wrapper div add class name first of all I'll make this flex give some space between the items so space x around 3 unit padding x 3 unit padding y 2 unit and list decoration none so list none nice and controlled overflow so overflow x scroll cool it's flex actually aha uh -huh. cool save this and now just go to our nav item target this list add class name cursor pointer of course and on hover i'll make the text green so hover text green cool and i'll also make the first letter capitalize so for that i'll be using the class name capitalize cool save this let's see here it is oh i don't want the scroll bar uh uh, uh. This is overflow x. Oh, it should be auto. Make this scrollable only if it's needed. Okay, save this. And now it should look beautiful. Yeah, on hover the text is green and my scroll bar is gone. Nice. And let's talk about the functionalities. Okay. So the idea is we need to create a state in our projects component that will hold all our projects. And then if I click on any of these items, for example, React, it will just filter out all the projects made using React and then reset the state. And if I click all, the state will be reset with all the projects. Simple. So let's do that. Let's create a state. Go to projects.tsx, our parent component. Uh huh. Use state. Up. The name of the state is what? Projects. And this is set projects. Cool. Import the use state. And the initial state. This will be an array and the array is this projects the data you have imported because by default this will be all and all will contain all the projects and this is showing red that is because this has the same name so i just need to rename this so here is a trick in vs code just use fn and f2 and rename this so projects data and replace these projects with this projects data cool save this and then we are also mapping over this projects, which is our state. So we don't need to change that. Cool. So we have created our first state. And let's create the handler. So const handle filter category, the name of the function. Arrow function. Cool. So I'll trigger this function every time a nav item is clicked. So if I click react, I'll pass the react. If I click mongo, I'll pass the mongo. If I click all, I'll pass the all. Right. So let's handle this. So the data is coming as category the type is not string but category or all it can be all category i need to import that so control and space imported and by the way guys notice that inside this project number i have also imported this category so it's simple but yeah just import that cool okay so if this is all if the category is all in that case i need to handle this in a different way so basically if this is all i'll set the projects with the projects data again and i'll also make the active item as all so for that i also need to create another state so this is again new state the name of the state is active which will hold our active item so this is all cool save this so if the category is all i'll make the set active item as all again or set active not active item all ops sorry or just category whatever you want you can make this all you can make this category and then just return cool else if this is not all in that case i'll grab this projects data and just filter out all the projects so grab every project and check if the project dot category the category field if the category field includes hint 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 i don't want any hint if the category includes the category the category coming as the argument just return that project so save this so basically inside this category field let me just go to data.ts so if you press react it will just grab all these projects go over every project and check this category field if this category field includes the react it will store that and at the end it will return the new array so I just need to grab this array, go to projects.tsx, okay grab this, let's name this new array because we can't directly mute the state. So set the projects with this new array, 
new array cool also make the set active with the category nice and now we just need to pass this handle filter category function to the navbar so here is my navbar here it is handle filter category is handle filter category it is showing red because i need to accept this property just go to projects navbar mm -hmm. actually i need to pass this prop to this nav item right so just grab this as props and we can just forward this props select every nav item and just forward the prop so inside the brace dot 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 props nice and then inside this nav item you can just grab this value so the property name is handle filter category which is a function cool just restructure this handle filter category nice and trigger this function if this list item is clicked so on click a nice arrow function handle filter category cool and just pass the value nice really nice save this uh -huh. this is showing a warning and if you want to get rid of this warning you can again use some typescript so function component inside this generic you can just use you know handle filter category is a function that's it save this the warning is gone that's it should work nice okay so you don't have any style for the active item but let's try to click on react oh ho, it works so these are all the projects made using react click on mongo this is the only project made using mongodb and here is the django and here is my node nice okay now let's handle this active item if the item is active in that case i need to show the active item in green color just go to nav item here is my nav item here is my nav item actually you can use the conditional class inside this class name but but it will be messy so what i am gonna do i'm gonna cut this class name and at the top i'm gonna create a new variable name this oh, not bar late class name and paste this here nice and if the active item is same as this value i'm gonna add a new class so for that i need to get access to the active state and how can i get access to the active state i need to pass the state come on it's simple property drilling in sort so here is my active item right yeah so i'm gonna pass this active where is my navbar here it is active is active cool uh yeah this is showing red because i need to accept this property go to projects navbar mm -hmm. here i'm getting all the props that is fine but inside this generic just get the active and this is string you can make this category but that is fine okay and you are just forwarding this and grab this category here category as string cool destructure the active not active active bro cool and now i can compare this so if the active is same as value in that case the class name is class name plus equal to that's my tab 9 ei based auto completion text green remember to put a space before this text green here is the space because these are gonna concatenate right and now just pass this class name here inside this brace pass the class name nice and here is my all which is active go to react react is active go to node node is active again click on all the state should be reset here it is so with this i think i am done with the projects page i need to refactor the style i guess yeah but we are gonna do that in the last part of this project so hold on we are not finished yet with the tailwind css and i also need to change the scroll bar's color that is not a big deal you can just use scroll bar thumb and just change the color so that's it see you in the next video bye hey guys welcome back i'm Swim from backbench kodai so in this video we are going to talk about one of the coolest features of next.js which is next.js image component so basically we are going to replace all these images using the next image component so for that let me just go to next image documentation here it is this next image component is nothing but a wrapper of the normal HTML image tag but the wrapper does a lot of cool stuff. But hey wait, why do you need the next image component? What's the problem with the normal HTML image tag? Well, to answer that first I will show you a lighthouse comparison between two websites. One is using the next image component and the other one is using the normal HTML image tag to render the images. So let me just open the incognito mode for some good stuff. 
So first I'll open my ongoing project which is running on localhost 3000 and this is also the production build guys. Look at this, this is run using the npm run start and I've also built a project using npm run build and the second one is my final project which is this URL, just copy this, go to incognito mode, paste this here, open the website, cool. So let me just go to my ongoing project which is not using the Next.js image component. You can also see here, this is not using the Next.js image component, just using the normal HTML image tag. Okay, so let me just go to projects tab and just open the Chrome Dev Tools. Ctrl Shift J is the shortcut. Go to Lighthouse. Uh -huh, just check the performance and the device is desktop, that is fine. And generate report. Look at this, the performance is 87 and where can I improve? I can improve on the images. Look at this, the opportunity properly size images, so we can improve that. And then the images elements do not have the explicit width and the height. My dog is barking. Okay, so this one is the project which is not using the Next.js image component. And now just go to my final project. Go to the projects tab. Just open the dev tools and go to lighthouse and generate report for the performance and the device is desktop okay so this website is rendering all these images using the next.js image component except this image the sidebar image this one this image is not using the next.js image component because i was lazy okay that's the only reason and now click on generate report and the performance is 100 like seriously, I did not expect that. I expected something like, you know, 97, 98, but we can still improve this. Look at this. The image elements do not have explicitly width and height. And that is because I told you this image, the sidebar image, I'm not using the Next.js image component. So that's how you can improve that. Okay, so that's just a normal comparison I wanted to show you. So this is 87 versus 100. Okay? So that's a big reason you should use Next.js image component. Now we are only using 8 or 9 images in this website. But for an e-commerce website, there are thousands of images in a product page. So you can get an idea how images affect a website, right? Okay, so now let's talk about all the features this Next.js image component provides. So for that, I'm on this website, which is using the Next.js image component, which has 100 performance, okay? So the first one is, it automatically serves the images in modern image format like OFP, which is around 30% smaller than JPEG. So to show that, I'll go to network, click on image, just refresh this. Now you can't see all these images because it loads the images lazily. My dog is still barking. Okay, so go to responsive. Look at this. As you scroll, it will load all these images. But the point is, look at the type of the image. This is OFP. And this OFP is around 30% smaller than JPEG. And you can also notice that the image which is not using the Next.js image component has a type of JPEG. So just click on this image, click on the preview. Yeah, here it is. Look at the type, it is image slash OFP. Okay, so that's one feature of Next.js image component. The next one is it automatically optimizes the images on demand. See if you just open this website in a mobile screen, let me show you. Just, just click on this responsive drop down and click on Moto G4. Refresh the page and click on an image. Look at the width of the image. This is go to headers. Sorry, go to headers and the width of the image is 1200, right? And now just go to you know something like iPhone, iPad Pro. Refresh the page and then click on an image. Look at the width of the image. This is 2048. So next day, automatically optimized the images based on the screen size. The third feature is it lazy load the images. So what I mean by that is it loads the images only when a certain threshold is reached. So let me show you. I have already shown that by the way. And look at this. In this viewport, I have only these images which is not using the Next.js image component. So let me just scroll down. So let me just scroll and look at this. I have these two images, right? So just refresh the page. You can see I have only two images. And as you scroll, as it comes into our viewport, it will load all these images. 
cool so that's a much needed feature we want you can also vary the quality of the images so you can see that click on an image go to headers and look at this q q means quality and the default quality is 75 you can also see in your, in your documentation here inside this documentation mm -hmm, you can see the quality here is the quality the quality of the optimized image an integer between 1 and 100 100 is the best and the default is 75 so i am going to play with all of this but the question is how does the next.js image component optimize the images so basically behind the scene it uses the source set click on an image uh -huh. click on the image nice go to elements and look at the source set it loads around eight or nine variants of the images this is the source set one two three four five six seven eight nine look at the width of the images so which one is perfect it will ship the images to the source that's it behind the scene it uses the next.js virtual cdn but you can definitely change the CDN, you can use the Cloudinary CDN or whatever CDN you want to use. I love Next.js by the way. So enough theory, now just go to practical. Okay, so just open your code editor and go to projects card, which is using the image. So first I replace this image with the next image. So for that we need to import the Next.js image component. So import image from next slash image. Cool. Save this. That's it. Now just go to this image. You can just keep a copy of this for the reference. Just let me duplicate that and comment this out. Cool. Just replace this image using the image with the capital image. Okay. Source is source, alt is all. That is same because I told you that this is only a wrapper of the normal HTML image tag. So this will just forward all these properties. Okay. You can also set a class. That is fine. On click, set show detail. That is fine. But here you need to set a width and the height which is around 300 pixel and the height is around 150 save this and just refresh the page go to local 3000 refresh the page and look at this this is using the next.js image component i can prove that go to dev tools red 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 where this is red why this is red what I am using width and height. Just give it a refresh. Ah, yeah, cool. Go to network. Look at this. The type of the image is WebP. It means it is using the Next.js image component. That is great. Now let's talk about the layout. So just go to Next.js image documentation. Here you can pass four layouts, which are mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here it is: fix, intrinsic, responsive, and fill. By default, this is intrinsic. Intrinsic means the image will scale the dimension down for the smaller viewports, but maintain the original dimension for the larger viewport. What I mean by that is, uh -huh, look at this. This is for the mobile screen, right? So let me just click on the responsive. Here it is. Look at the size of the image. So for the larger screen, it will not maintain the height and the width, but for the smaller screen, it will maintain the aspect ratio. Look at this. But to solve that, we can use the responsiveness. So inside this layout, you can pass the responsive. Here it is. So let's pass that. And pass the responsive. Great. Save this. I guess I'm done with the incognito mode. So just close this incognito mode. Uh, local 3000. Now let's check the responsiveness of the image. Look at this. It will maintain the height and the width. great now you might ask that what is the point of using the width and the height when you are using the responsive well next.js says that you need to provide that because setting the size of the image component helps next.js to determine the initial size of the internal responsive container so that's why you need to pass the width and the height cool and then we can pass fix which is just fix does not give a fuck about the responsiveness look at this check the responsiveness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. look at this this is fixed it does not care and then the fourth one is we can pass fill fill now this fill will maintain the size of the parent container so for this fill you don't need to pass the width and the height just pass the layout as fill and this will make this image position absolute 
So just save this. So it will take the height and the width of the relative parent. And what is my relative parent? For that, let me just go to projects page. I think inside the projects page, I have a div which has a relative position. And <laughs> here it is. Look at this. Inside this div, I have this class name which is relative. So that image will take the height of this div. Okay. Let's see. Height and the width, I should say. Look at this. You can see only one image and that is because it has the absolute position and just go to the chrome dev tools click on an image uh-huh just see the position this is the styles look at the position this is absolute so it means if i just remove the relative from this div it will take the height of the full body mm, where is my relative here it is remove this save this and now it should take the full screen let it load here it is this is great huh let me also show you the quality you can also vary the quality so just go to the image pojescart.tsx you can pass a parameter which is quality and by default this is 75 let me just make this 100 and refresh the website and here it is look at this uh -huh. just make this quality 1 it will be something like 144 pixel yeah look at this it is still quite good so it means for a smaller screen it will look really nice but let's go back to quality 75 or just remove this quality okay nice so what i want i want the layout responsive and the height is back to 300 no 300 150 and the width is 300 that's a perfect size for our image and now just copy this image tag and replace the second image which is mm -hmm. here it is comment this out paste this here image path image path cursor pointer i don't need this on click i also don't need this class name uh-huh that's it save this and just go to projects.tsx and just make this relative again refresh the website great click on an image nice yeah quite good now let's replace this image the sidebar image so for that just copy the image tag go to projectscart.tsx i don't need to copy let's go to sidebar.tsx uh-huh let's import the image from next image so import image from next slash image cool uh -huh, make this capital image capital image okay source is same i am going to get an error for this source i want to show you that class name with 32 height 32 that is fine actually that is not fine i need to set the height and the width explicitly so the height is 128 pixel right so height is 128 pixel which is you can you don't need to pass the pixel but i want to pass that i don't know why and then the layout is in this case intrinsic is better because i don't really want this to be responsive and by default this is intrinsic so doesn't really matter width and height i don't need that save this and let's see an error refresh the page here it is so the error is invalid source property it says that to enable image optimization for images hosted on an external website, you need to include the domain in next config file. With that file, Next.js will know that which domains are allowed to be optimized. So in this case, we need to specify the sumitde.nlify.app domain. So let's do it. Here is an example of Next.js config file. So just click on this link. Here it is. So just copy this. Go to your root. And inside your root, create a new file which is called next.config.js config.js and paste this here nice so you need to include the domain for that just remove this assets.example.com so just put your external domains here that's it that's what you need to do so just restart the server oh this is not next this is next my bad i'm a god of typo 
uh, found a change in nextjs.config file you need to restart the server okay no problem control c npm run dev that's it refresh this nice the image is loaded this is using the quality 75 so just increase the quality go to sidebar quality 100 save this so guys that's it for this section if you have any doubt you can just put a comment that's it see you in the next video bye hey guys welcome back i'm smith from backbench coder so this is the second last part of this series and in this section we are going to animate our portfolio using framer motion okay now before i explain what is framer motion and all these stuffs let me show you what we are going to make in this video okay so this is my final product and let's go to this ongoing project which is running on local 3000 okay so basically we don't have any animation click on this resume no animation click on the about click on the projects not at all now just go to the final product and then click on resume here it is click on projects nice tiger animation click on about and here it is again click on projects click on a project nice minimalistic but quite impressive okay so what is framer motion okay so framer motion is an open source react animation library using which you can make production ready animation you can build gesture animation variants keyframe drag motion values exit animation and much more using its simple syntax so here is a syntax this is actually a nice playground to play with the framer motion animation you can just find that in the official website okay so yeah this is quite cool it may seem a crazy syntax but believe me it is quite simple okay so here is the documentation i'll put the link in the description box so you can just check that out and here is the npm package so you can install that using npm iframer motion so let it install go to your code editor open your terminal actually split your terminal and npm iframer motion that's it okay so the installation is done and let's start the coding part so what we are going to animate okay so first of all we are going to animate this bar the skill bar so what is the animation go to about click on resume again here it is so basically we are going to animate the width so initially the width is around 10 pixel and at the end it will take the original width that's it let's see it again go to about go to resume nice but what is the syntax how can we animate that yeah here it is let's see the syntax again okay so first of all you can see this motion dot what is this motion dot if you want to animate a HTML element, you need to convert that element to a motion element. And how can you convert this to motion element? Using this motion dot. By using this motion dot, it can access the motion API. And then you can just pass the animate as the property. Or the best option is you can create an object. And inside that object, you need to create two nested objects. One object contains the value about the initial state. For example, here is the hidden object. I mean, the name of the object is hidden. It contains the value about the initial state which is opposite is zero. Oh, let me just zoom in and then the other object will contain the value about the ending of the animation which is here in this case visible so at the end it will have opacity of one that's it that's how easy this is to animate in framer motion okay enough talk let's do it so we are going to animate the var right so just go to the bar.tsx go to your components go to bar.tsx close the sidebar I guess I need to zoom in. Mm, great. Okay, so let's create the object first. So let's name this variance. And then inside that object, I'll create one object for the initial state. Initial, you can name this hidden or whatever you want. So the initial state, the width is around zero. That's it. And then create a second object. Let's name this animate, whatever you want to name. Okay, at the end of the animation, it should take the exact width, which is the bar width, this variable. That's it. Now, you can also pass some transition. And you need to pass that transition inside this animate property. So, transition, which is again a separate object. Oh, I missed a comma. I'll set a duration of around 0 0.4 second. That's it. And now we need to pass this property. So we need to animate this div. 
and to animate we need to convert this div to a motion div and how can we convert to motion div we need to import the motion from framer motion first of all so import motion from framer motion great and now just add motion at first motion dot div that's it and notice that you also need to put the motion dot at the closing tag okay so save this and now we can pass the property so first of all we need to pass the variance which we have just created nice and then you need to pass another two property which is initial and animate so initial now what is the value of the initial the value of the initial is the name of this object here in this case the name of the object is initial so you need to pass the name of the object as string again i repeat you need to pass the name of the object as string so just pass the name of the object as string so initial and then the second property which is animate is again the name of the object which is animate name of the object name of the object name of the object a string a string a string okay save this and that's it it should animate let's see click on resume oh it did animate but we can still improve that yeah how let's see so if you just notice the animation you can see a spring effect spring effect spring yeah look at this it's kind of spring effect so you can add that effect in the transition let's see the documentation yeah got it so you can pass a type of transition here in this case this is a type of spring now some transition properties are only available for a particular transition for example this stiffness and this damping are only available for the spring so let's add the spring animation go to the variance inside this transition property add a type and the type is spring oops i can't type spring i'll also pass a value which is damping which is around 10 this is basically the value of the bounce and then a stiffness the stiffness of a spring which is 100 now again i repeat these properties are only available for the type of spring now there are some other types of animation available in framer motion and all those have some specific properties which is only valid for that particular animation just some framer motion thing now let's see this again go to local 3000 it should refresh let's click on resume and here is the spring effect nice okay so that's how it is done and now let's animate this top part let's see the animation first okay just click on about go to about again and look at the top animation this is basically sliding up with a fade in effect let's see this again click on F resume off click on resume sliding up with a fade in effect let's do it so for that we need to go to resume.tsx we are done with this bar.tsx we don't need that close this close this close this open the resume.tsx i guess the name of the page here it is close this let's zoom out nice okay so basically we need to animate these two separate part this diff and this diff uh huh we can do that so let's create the variant first const variance not vary it so the initial state this is what opacity is zero and position this to y60 unit it means 60 pixel cause we want a sliding up effect and then for the animate part so let's copy this object let's change the name oh i misspell that it should be initial not initial 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 animate so opacity i want this back to one and y back to zero nice so that's our variance ready and now we need to convert this div to a motion div and how can we convert that we need to import motion from framer motion motion from really easy to animate guys so let's animate this div so for that let's convert this to motion div using motion dot and notice that at a closing tag it is also attached the motion dot and now we need to pass the variant which is this variant and then the initial property which is the string the name of the object is initial which holds our initial properties of my initial 
and again guys by this initial i am referring to this object this initial object that's how the syntax of frame motion work so the second property is animate which is again the string which is animate that's it save this and just copy this objects and put this for the second div which is this one nice this is not valid until you convert this div to motion div so let's convert this motion dot beautiful let's see this go to projects and then go back to resume and here is my effect fading up fading up that's a nice name okay so now what i'm gonna do i'm going to put this object this variance object in a separate file so that we can reuse this variance just cut this from here go to your root create a separate file let's name this animation animation animations or animation animations dot ts put it here the name of the variance is something like fade enough which is the effect of the animation fade enough and just export this out export const great and now just go to resume dot tsx and here you just need to import this fade enough variant so just import that import fade enough up from dot dot slash animation that's it and now we just need to pass this fade enough instead of this variance fade enough and the second one is fade enough it should work fine let's just double check this go to projects go to resume beautiful nice next animate the service card so just go to about let's animate the service card so let's see the animation again go to about you can see the animation is quite same the fade enough so here is my service card dot tsx now look at this you can just pass the femur motion properties to this div that's perfectly valid it will animate your div but if you want to put stagger animation which is in this case we want to delete a children animation look at this go to about it has some delay for each child component so to put stagger animation you need to go to the parent div so just go to index.tsx index.tsx oh yeah yeah this is index.tsx and this is also a reason i had to wrap this using this div so that i can put the femur motion property first of all we need to convert this div to motion div which is just motion dot and my auto import should do my job let's see at the top motion is imported from framer motion great and now we need to pass the variance so variance is what fade enough again so we need to import that my auto import should do my job fade enough from animation auto imported i can see that so fade enough is imported from animation and now we need to pass the other property so it is initial the name is initial again as string and then the animate which is again animate that's it we should see some animation let's see go to projects and go back to about and here it is the fade enough effect but we want to delay the children for that we need to create the stagger animation so let's create a variant first again the process is same guys we need to convert the div to motion div here in this case we need to convert this parent div to motion div and pass the variants very simple go to animation.ts copy an object the name of the variant is stagger cool i don't want anything at the initial nothing for the animate but we want to put the transition so transition is an object and here you just need to pass the stagger children property everything is available in the documentation guys just please look at that so stagger children is around 0.1 so 0.1 second delay for every child and now just go to index.tsx target the parent div which is this one pass the variance which is stagger should be auto imported and then the initial property which is initial okay and the second property is animate which is animate great and let's convert this div to motion div beautiful and now here is the thing if you animate a child which has a stagger effect we are animating this div using the stagger effect so for that you need to remove this initial and animate for the child element now don't worry it will just take the initial and animate property from the parent that's it 
so it will just take the initial and animate from this div okay so just save this and let's see uh -huh. go to projects oh, you can already see that just say again go to projects go to about nice hey guys i just faced an error regarding the femur motion which was quite unexpected so the error is something like this this is because of the latest framework motion updates. So if you face this error, just downgrade the package. For that, you just need to go to a terminal and install the version 3.10.3. So npm i framework motion at the 3.10.3. I've already installed that. You can also see in my package.json. Oops. Well, this error took around one hour of my time. I'll also mention that at the starting of the video during the editing part. So just chill. Okay, now continue building the animation. So let me just close this go to your index.tsx and here i guess you have imported motion and then convert this div to framer motion add stagger effect to the parent div then pass the initial property and the animate property and then for the child product you convert this div to framer motion and just pass the variance to fade in up that's it save this my server is running on local 3000 just go to the local 3000 refresh the page and here is my stagger effect cool let's go to projects and then go back to about nice okay let's do the project section so let's see what is the animation let's go to final product let's click on projects yeah it has the same animations so you can just fade in up for the child and then just wrap this with a stagger animation yeah we can do that so just go to the projects.tsx uh -huh. Okay, first I need to import the motion, but my auto import can do that. So, this is my parent div, right? We need to add the stagger effect on this parent div. So, add motion dot div. Let's try to auto import this control and space auto import it. Nice. And then just copy all the properties from the index.tsx. Here, this is variance initial animate. Copy these three, go to projects.tsx, pass this, import the stagger would be auto imported from animations nice and then for the child div also add the motion so that it can access the motion api nice and now just pass the variance so the variance is not staggered but fading up oh my fading up yeah auto imported auto imported come on auto import you can do that nice and i'll also pass the key here not inside this project's card just cut this pass the key here again just a react thing okay nice so it should add the animation let's see nothing happened why refresh the page yeah cool again go to about go to projects nice and now just click on a project i should animate this inner project card right so just go to the final version click on a project so again it has a stagger effect with a fade in up that's how easy to do animation in framer motion you just create the variance first and then just reuse that okay so let's do that go to inner project card so for that i need to go to project card.tsx mm -hmm. i need to animate this part this show detail part right okay cool oh by the way guys you'll get all the code in the description box so if anything goes wrong in your code you can just check that out okay so just target this div this parent div and add the stagger animation motion dot div also import the motion from framer motion nice add the properties oops let's copy this from index.tsx this one stagger initial animate go to projects card put it here import the stagger cool okay nice and now i need to animate these children so to animate this image, I wrap this image with a div. So div, wrap this, nice, save this. I'll convert this div to motion div and pass the fade in up effect. So just copy this variance. Oh, don't need to copy, why to copy? Okay, so that's all for this image. And then target this second div, convert this to motion div and pass the animation, which is variance is fade in up. Copy this. Pass this here, that's it, save this. I am done with the left side. Done. Let's test this out. Mm -hmm -hmm. Click on a card. Oh, it's a final product, bro. Uh -huh. Click on a card, nice. 
click on a card nice okay i need to add some padding but i'll do that in the refactoring part and now let's add the animation for the right section so again i need to add the stagger effect for the right right parent copy these properties actually close this this is my second div put the properties convert the div to motion div nice and now you need to convert each child to motion element so age one let's convert this to motion element using motion dot first of all let's add all the motion first okay let's target this div add motion dot that's it i guess mm -hmm. yeah that's it and now just add the variance which is fair enough so just using a multi cursor i can do that yep so variance is fair enough great save this and let's see uh -huh. tomorrow is my exam and i'm recording a video anyway just click on a card nice click on another card beautiful so with this all the animation inside the page is done right so we have animated the project section we have animated the about section and we have also animated the resume section and now we need to animate the routes uh, let me show you how this works let's go to a final product okay just click on this about look at this it looks like it just fades out and then fades in click on projects look at this nice yeah let's do that so for that you just need to go to underscore app.tsx which is our special file where our component lives underscore app.tsx so basically we need to animate which part this component part because this is ultimately the page right okay just remove this just remove this about we don't need that what kind of comment is that navbar is navbar nice comment so to animate a route you need to wrap this component with animate presence so just import this animate presence from framer motion import from framer motion the name of the component is animate presence oh my animate presence yeah here it is and then just wrap this component oops animate presence uh -huh, wrap this cool but it will not work until you specify a key so just pass the key to this component this is important because using this key framer motion will identify which page to animate so the key is router dot route and from where this router is coming so we can get the router using the property so restructure this router save this and it should be fine so this is the first step we need to do to animate the route and now let's define the animation so for that let's go to animations.ts again the process is same guys you need to create a variance and then pass this to the motion component uh -huh. so let's copy a variant basically duplicate that let's name this what route animation route animation cool or route fade in whatever okay at the initial stage what i want i want the opacity to be zero opacity zero cool and at the animate state what i want i want the opacity back to one cool and then just remove this stagger animation inside this transition part i'll add a delay of 0.1 second and duration is around 0.1 second cool save this and now just go to index.tsx okay this is my page we need to pass this variant to the wrapper div right so just convert this div to motion div motion dot and just pass the properties so variance is what the route should be auto imported route animation or something like that you have route animation cool and then the initial which is initial i just missed the tab 9 yeah animate is animate cool save this let's see go to about something happened click on resume yeah so some kind of animation happened but that is very silly but we can do better so let's do that let's add the animation to the other pages i don't worry guys we'll improve the animation okay so just copy this variance initial and animate go to projects.tsx convert the wrapper div to motion div motion dot cool let's pass the properties nice just import that my router animation should be imported from animation nice and now just go to where about no not about this resume.tsx okay just 
target the rapper div, convert this div to motion div. I love frame of motion by the way. I love everything man. Okay, so just convert this div to motion div and pass the properties. Nice, import the route animation from animation. Cool. And let's see. Click on resume. About something happening, but that's not what you want. So basically what's happening is we are animating this when the page did mount, but we are not animating this when the page is exiting. Okay. So for that we can pass another property which is called exit. So just go to animation. Just go to this route animation. After this animate, I can pass another property which is exit. So opacity, again I want back to 1. And then you can also pass transition. So our delay is 0 0.1. And in ease effect, this is ease in out, which is built in in framer motion. Okay, and now I have the exit property, right? So just go to every page and just pass this exit property. Exit to exit. Remember, you need to pass this as string. So just copy this, go to projects.tsx, pass this, let's go to resume.tsx, pass this, save this. Let's see, refresh the page, let's go to resume. There is something wrong in this animation, but before that, you can see this distortion. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong, but before that, you can see the distortion of pages. We can fix that. So for that, you need to pass a property which is called exit before enter. So just go to underscore app dot tsx and pass exit before enter. That's it. So it will just wait for the current animation to be finished and then only it will start the next animation. So save this. Let's see. Click on about. Click on projects. About. Yeah, there is the animation, but something is wrong. We can do better. What's the problem? We are wrapping the component. We are also passing the key. We are wrapping this with animate regions. And then just pass the exit animation as exit. What's the problem? Oh, I know why. Opacity not 1, its opacity should be 0, bro. Sorry, 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 sorry. The duration is back to 0 0.1. Let's click on resume. Yeah, great. Click on about. Nice. Click on projects. Let it load. Nice. Click on resume, projects. Beautiful. Click on about. Go to projects, click on a card. Nice. So that's it, guys. That's all for the framer motion part. I hope you have enjoyed this course. I really enjoyed this framer motion library. So that's it. See you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Smith from Backbench Code. So we have completed our project, and this video is all about refactoring our project. In the next section, we are gonna deploy our portfolio. Okay, so I've seen a major bug. Let's start with that. Just go to project. I don't know if you have noticed that or not. Somebody mentioned that in the comments. And that's why I love this community. Okay, so the bug is, if you just click on a project, it will just show the show detail, that is perfectly fine. But if you don't close that, and then if you open another project card, let's say this Twitter clone, now this is opened. This is totally fine. And now if you just close this Twitter clone, look at this, the previous project is still active. Right, so it's a bug, we need to solve this. Let's see the current logic, what is happening. Okay, so every component has its own state, which is show detail. And if the show detail is true, you are showing the details. Inside this condition, if the show detail is true, you are showing this div which contains our details. And how are you controlling the state? If you click on this image, you are setting the state as true. And then if you open another card, the new card state is true now. And as it has the absolute position, it is showing above all the previously opened project card. Now how can we fix that? We can simply solve the problem if we can control the other project card state from any project card component. And how can you do that? Simply by lifting the state to the parent component. And then after lifting the state, we can just again wrap this block with the condition such as if the active state is this project, then only we will show this. And if the state is null, then no project is active. So that's the idea. Let's do it. Okay, so first of all, to identify which project is currently active, I will assign unique ID to each project. So just go to the data.ts. Here is inside this data.ts, I need to assign ID. Close this service. Close this languages. Close this tools. Okay. So for every project card, I'll create another property which is ID. 
and the id is one you can just put unique number okay let me just quickly copy that id3 id4 and id8 cool and it is showing red that is because in the type.ts i need to assign this id where is my type.ts where is my type.ts here it is okay so inside this project the id which is a number cool save this okay so inside this data.ts i have just assigned id to every project okay from id 1 to 8 cool and now just go to projectscart.tsx just cut this state we need to leave the state to the parent component go to projects.tsx which is the parent and then inside this let's close this i don't need that okay put a state which is so detail and the setter is set so detail now this will not contain boolean value instead it will contain number so let me just specify the types set contains either number or null so if this is null that means there is no project active okay that is cool and at the initial state this is null cool and now i'll pass this show detail to the project card component so here is my project card put show detail which is the show detail state and then set show detail which is the set show detail setter copy this this is showing red because of the typescript just go to projectscard.tsx and just mention the types of the properties which are coming oh types of the properties which are coming so here we need to define the show detail which is either null or number and then the set show detail which is a function so the argument name is id let's say and it has the type either null or number and it returns nothing void cool save this let's destructure these properties uh -huh. after this project so detail and set so detail cool fine and now whenever i click on a project i'll not make this true instead i'll set the id of this project have i destructured the id so just destructure the id from the project cool and now i'm setting the id that is fine and then inside this condition i'll check if the show detail is equal to equal to equal to current id then only i'll show this project and the last thing i need to do whenever i click on this close button i'll make this null not false but null save this and let's see refresh the page nice click on a project that is fine click on another project cool close the project beautiful so every time you open a new project that project's id is assigned to the show detail state so this condition automatically breaks for the previous project this condition the show detail is equal to is equal to id because the show detail is now changed so that's why this is forcefully closed and the next project is showing okay so the first bug is done and then the next thing i need to do which is to improve the scroll bar this is really simple we are going to use the normal vanilla css so just go to global.css here just use webkit scrollbar thumb so colon webkit scrollbar thumb yep need to assign a background image and the background image will be gradient so linear gradient to right bottom and then i need to assign the colors so the colors are the green and the blue right so i can get the green from i don't know let's get this from tailwind config yep this green my cute green go to global.css there is by the way a plugin available to change the scrollbar color but just to change the scrollbar color i don't want to install a plugin and then the blue color what is the blue color just assign a blue color which is 057 for now you can just change that 5e6 cool i'll also change the width and the height of the scrollbar because this is really big so this is webkit scrollbar the width is around 8 pixel and the height is 0 oops oh height is 0 cool save this let's see it should change the scrollbar's color refresh the page 
cool this is my new scroll bar this looks great okay next what i'm gonna do i just add some padding on this project card basically on the show details part so let's do that this is really simple using tailwind so just go to project card.tsx here it is oh, so currently i have the padding p2 but from the medium screen i want padding around 10 let's see refresh the page click on a project nice quite good uh -huh. let's make this rounded the parent div and also add some border on this image let's quickly do that since this project card.tsx add rounded large rounded large on the parent div okay and then just target the image I wrap this image with a div so this is really easy to add border so just add class name border for unit and the border color is I don't know gray 100 mm -hmm. save this let's see cool looks nice close this cool and now let's handle this download resume so if you click on this link it should download your resume so for that just go to sidebar.tsx sidebar.tsx here just go to this link this one this resume just target this anchor tag and add these properties which is download and href so basically this is the file which is sumitde resume.pdf which is located inside this assets folder and notice that i have created this assets folder inside this public oh actually i have not created the assets folder yet you know what i don't have the pdf so let me show you with an image you can just change this with a pdf this is this is exactly the same okay so let me just show you with the image let's say this bling.jpg so just remove this pdf and assets the name of the folder is images and the file name is bling.jpg please put the correct file name and then look at this sumitderesume.pdf this is the name of the file so just say you know what bling.jpg the name of the image that's it what you need to do you just need to change this file with your pdf with your resume i should say okay so just save this and let's see go to sidebar.tsx click on this download resume and here is my bling.jpg it is downloaded let's open this image yeah this is the image okay so just close this hey love so i guess that's it if you have noticed any problem you can just comment this out i will definitely fix that because i always wanted to have a community so please comment down what's your thought on this project. Okay, so that's it guys. In the next video, we are going to deploy our project. Till then, bye and wait for it. If you have enjoyed this project, please hit the like button. At least for the algorithm of the YouTube, please. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Smith from Backbench Coder. So we have almost finished our project. Only the last part is left, which is the deployment. And that's what we are going to do in this section. Okay, so we'll host our project in Vartel, which is also the creator of the next days. And hey, it's free. Okay, so let's prepare the file for the deployment. So just go to your code editor. Okay, so first of all, you need to manage all the environment variables. Although you don't have any environment variables in this project, but I want to show you how environment variables works in Next.js. Okay, so for that, just go to index.tsx and then inside this get server side prop. Although you have commented this out, but in your big project, you might need this. Okay, so inside this get server side props, look at this URL. This is the absolute URL. What I mean by that is you need to pass the base endpoint. So in this case, this is HTTP localhost 3000. But if you deploy this project, that does not exist this localhost 3000, right? So you need to get this variable from the environment. And how can you do that? For that, you just need to go to your root folder and create a new file, which is .env.local. Local. So, oh, not, not a folder, bro. .env.local. Cool. And here you can just create a variable like API endpoint or something like that. But, but, but there is a specific variable which is called Varsel URL. So just go to documentation. Here is the documentation. I'll put the link of the description. Oh, I'll put the link of the documentation in the description box. Although I'm sure you are not going to check this. Okay. But the point is, look at this Varsel URL. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here I have this Varsal URL and look at the description. This is the URL of the deployment. Now the point is as this is a system variable, 
as this is under a system variable Vercel will automatically populate this variable during the deployment so you don't need to externally configure this ok ok so Vercel URL in my development stage this is localhost 3000 so just get this put this here and we can get this value using process.env.vercel URL so just remove this use a template string then dollar curly brace this is process dot env dot virtual url oh. okay cool close the sidebar you need to restart the server cause you have just configured the environment variable so npm run dev cool now i want to prove this that this actually populate the virtual url uh, so just get this process dot env dot virtual url and inside this props just send something like you know the name of the property is what endpoint just for testing i want to send the endpoint to the client so that i can just log this out and now i can access this endpoint so inside this next page why i'm using typescript here i don't need to use that okay so just get the property which is endpoint and just log this out log uh, endpoint so during the development stage it should show localhost 3000 right okay so just go to the client refresh the page ctrl shift j go to the console and by the way guys yesterday next day 10.1 version was released so and that is quite nice because that has a less refresh rate and all this stuff uh, we have an error only the absolute URLs are supported what's the problem bro mm -hmm. i have the virtual url log this out This is undefined. Why? Oh, wow! I have created this .env .local inside these pages. Just create this file inside the root folder, guys. Okay, you need to restart the server again. Sorry, my bad. Uh huh. Restart the server. Go to the client. Refresh the page. Uh huh. Go to console. Look at this. This is local three thousand, right? But after a deployment, you will see something else. I'll show you. Okay, so that's how you manage the environment variable. Nice. Yeah, really nice. I don't need this data. Just comment this out. I don't need this console log in the server. Just comment this out. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, seriously cool. And now let's talk about the next build. So let's go to package.json. Okay, here you can see the script which is next build. So what next build does is next build builds the production application in the .next folder. So after running this next build, actually let me just run this next build. So just close the current process and run npm run build. Okay, so after building next start, starts a Node.js server that serves both the statically generated and server side rendered pages. But you don't need to do this. Let me show you. I am doing this just to show you manually how it, the things are done. Make sure there is no TypeScript related error else it will not compile. Uh-huh done and now just look at this file explorer and you should see a .nest folder okay so this folder contains all the production ready code okay close this nice you can run the production ready server using npm run start but you don't need to do that this is super fast by the way okay cool and now just go to virtual so just go to virtual.com create an account i would recommend you to continue with github i already have an account so just click on this continue with github after all you are going to connect this project with the github so i would recommend you to log in with github and hey by the way guys i am guessing you have a github repository and you are pushing that code to a github repository come on i can guess that okay huh. click on this new project and here you just need to import your repository mine is this one next portfolio youtube and look at this this is listening to the main branch so every time you push the code to the main branch it will deploy the project my dog is barking wow so just go to a terminal git add git commit mm -hmm, prepare for the deployment cool git push when you are happy with your piece of work you make a commit so git push mine is day summit wow ah, cool now just go to virtual again 
Mm -hmm. Just click on the select the personal account. Now just give this project a name. And then this is framework next JS root directory slash. Click on this build and output settings, which is npm run build, that is perfectly fine. And then look at this environment variable. Now in this case we don't have any environment variable. We have only one that is a system variable. And remember what I have told you about the system variable? This will be automatically populated by Vercel. Look at this, Vercel provides a set of environment variables that are automatically populated by the system. Okay, but if you have a variable something like MongoDB URL or you know JWT token, in that case you need to externally configure that. So in that case you will do something like Mongo URL or MongoDB URI and then you will put this URI here as simple as that okay we don't have any so click on this deploy that's it uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. wow so my project has been deployed click on this visit and here is my project click on this toggle theme cool this is my coolest portfolio <laughs> okay but remember the virtual url let's go to console Look at the Vercel URL, this is automatically populated by Vercel which is the base endpoint but hey this is next portfolio YT, MI, blah 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 but my original endpoint is next portfolio YT, what's going on? There's nothing wrong in this because Vercel deploy your project in multiple URL. So for that just click on this Vercel and just click on your project. In this case this is my next portfolio YT and then you should see the domains here. So under this domain, just hover over this plus two, and you can see all the domains. So this is the same project. So if you click on this URL and just copy this, it's an next portfolio YT Sumit. Go here. This is showing odd. That is because my dark mode extension is on. Close this. Look at this. Toggle theme. Nice. Okay. So that's it for the deployment guys but the last thing I want to show you a lighthouse test. So just get the URL. Okay just go to incognito mode for some good stuff again. Whenever I talk about incognito mode I remember some names which are hmm control shift j. Okay so just go to lighthouse. Just check mark this performance, best practice, accessibility and SEO. Okay click on general report. We are going to improve this. Okay, don't worry. First time you might see a low score, but we are going to improve this. Okay, so performance is 100, best practice is 100, accessibility is 83, and SEO is 80. Okay, so we need to improve the SEO. <laughs> How can you improve the SEO? First of all, let's see the SEO and then we will check the accessibility. Okay, so document does not have a title element. Yeah, we know that. And then document does not have any meta description okay cool so just go to your underscore document and here inside this head i am going to put a meta tag so let me just copy this this is a simple meta tag about the description and the keywords okay so description is minus track developer looking for a job no i am not looking for a job and then keywords is full stack developer freelancer man developer and all so just some normal seo things so inside this underscore document just put this meta tag and then for the individual page we will put individual title and how can you do that for that just go to index.tsx and import our head tag mm -hmm. we don't need the service from type so. so import head from next head hey here is the point guys there is two head component in next.js one is this head from the next head and the second one is head from the next document we are going to import the head from the next head okay inside this index.tsx else it will throw an error and you will be confused what's going on okay so inside this div just put the head and then we can put the title we can put the meta tag all of this stuff inside the head tag okay so the title is web developer i don't know and then portfolio cool or Sumit just put whatever comes in your mind my dog is still barking bro and then just go to projects.tsx close the sidebar let me just zoom out it's looking odd okay 
So inside this div, let's put this header here. Copy this. Cool. I need to import the head. So control and space. <laughs> Look at this. This is suggesting me to import the head from the document. But hey, we are going to import the head from the next head. So import head from next up. head. Cool. Mm -hmm. This is web developer portfolio Sumit De. Oh, you know what? This is not portfolio, this is project. Let's copy this head tag. Let's go to resume or about. What? Resume. Cool. Here, mm -hmm. inside this div, you can put this inside any div, inside any element, okay? Okay, you need to import the head again. So, import, let me just copy this. Oh. I believe in copy paste. Okay. So web developer, this is not project, this is resume. So that's it, that's everything for the SEO. Let's look at the accessibility. Uh huh. Inside this accessibility, this is suggesting me to change the background and the foreground color, but hey, we are not going to change the color. Sorry. You may change that, but we are not going to change that. Okay, anything else, bro? Uh huh. Yeah, document does not have a title element. We have just improved that. And then links do not have a name. And that is because I need to pass an area level. So just go to the sidebar, which is not sidebar, yeah, sidebar.tsx. This is complaining about this anchor tag. So just target all the anchor tag and pass something called area level. Okay. So for the first one, this is YouTube. In my case, this is YouTube. And by the way guys, please hit the subscribe button, please, please. At least like the video, you can do that. And then this is LinkedIn. And then the third one is GitHub. Cool. And then heading elements are not in a sequentially descending order. Oh, okay. So this is complaining about this page. So this paragraph, this I am currently parsing blah, blah, blah. And then for every service card, right? Okay, so the idea is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this H6 or H5, the second H6. So just go to the service card. Inside the service card, this is not H6, this is H5. In Tailwind, this does not really matter. Okay, cool. And I think that's all. That's all I can improve. Anything else? Nope. So now what I'm going to do? I'm just going to push this code to the main branch. So git add, git commit, again the same commit message, uh, git push, again password bro, desumit, cool, done, done, done. Just go to Vercel and you should see something like hey deployment is going on, something like that. Refresh the page. I have also given the same comment message, so I can't check this out. Actually, just go to next portfolio YT, click on this deployment. Yeah, this is building. Cool. Look at this. This is duration 41 seconds. So let it build. Click on inspect deployment, and you can see the deployment. Done with package JSON. Done with package JSON. Uh huh. Ready, ready, ready. Okay, cool. Just go to a link, refresh the page. Nice, you can see the title. This is web developer portfolio for midday. And now, just again check the lighthouse. Now, just go to incognito mode, bro. Go to incognito mode, refresh the page. Okay, uh huh. Close this lighthouse check and generate report again. You should see better. SU around 100, I'm expecting because that's why you are using server-side rendering, you know. Wow, look at this. ACO 100, base practice 100, performance 99, accessibility 95. You can improve the accessibility if you want to change the color. It will be 100. But this is quite fine, huh? Yeah, last time it was 100, bro. <laughs> what happened? Uh, image elements, element rendering blocking issues. Refresh the page. Then I report again. 
I don't know, just for fun. I want 300. Oh, okay. So, I don't know what's going on. Element render blocking the one person lagging because of the Google font. Anyway, so that's it for this video. That's it for this project. If you have enjoyed this, please let me know. Please do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.